There's no time. All right, episode 129. I'm sure there's a lot of people waiting for this one. This is Nostradamus, also known as Nostra Thomas. I taught this man everything he knew about how to see tomorrow. He knew? Yeah, he knew. <laughs> Nostra Thomas, the man who saw tomorrow. Yeah, I've been drinking. <laughs> Yeah, like I said on our previous couple of shows, we're mm. starting to record several episodes at once. Yeah. So sometimes some of these may be drunker than usual, but that's like probably, you know what I mean. It's we, okay. Jenny's done done all the research. I know this real well, and we've got it already structured, and there's, it's outlined. We know exactly what we're talking about. We got this. We got this. Do we? You know, we know what's funny? <laughs> what's that? The intros, we used to do the news. We don't do the news anymore. Remember, I used to sing the news. We forgot about that. Well, Doesn't you can matter. still sing it if you want so the to. The news, the news. I'll tell you what the news is. Jenny's book is selling fantastic, guys. And we really want to thank you guys for Yes, thank you. We have a lot of repeat customers, it. a lot of new customers. And uh, I got, like, awesome reviews on it. Yeah. You guys kick ass. Yeah, if you have the book and you haven't left a review yet, please leave one. And I swear to God, uh, before the end of the year, I'm going to have fucking volume three out. Yeah. I swear. Volume one, uh, also Unseen Hand, and all the other ones are all going to be re-recorded. She's already gotten volume one. I'm re-recording volume one uh, at the moment. Yeah, I'm about a third of the way through. By the time you hear this, it may be done, actually. It might be, yeah. It might be done by then. We'll we'll see. uh, uh, Because of the new uh, dead room that I built for her, she's able to get it done real real fast, real good, too. Because she can stand up and sit there and emote while she's reading and... We're going to, you know, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Because, like, seriously, imagine this. Like, w- the the audiobook that I did of Volume 2. Yeah, you should have That seen was it. recorded. You guys would laugh. In the closet yeah. in my office. With towels. With, right. like, it wasn't even towels. It was, like, comforters. Comforters, right. He, like, rigged, like, he took these comforters and, like, yeah. put them, like, all around the inside. Like, with to muffle the sound with poles and whatnot. It got hot in there. It was very hot. <laughs> And she couldn't and stand up. I couldn't she stand. Had to, like, I had to sit like cross-legged yeah, and like right. read into the microphone, and I could only read for about an hour or two before my yeah. feet fell asleep. And, See, because yeah. the the standards the the standards that uh, the, uh, Audible is now demanding, they're good standards actually. It has to have a certain baseline noise. Yeah, In other words, it's got to be quiet. It has to be below minus sixty decibels. Right. So uh, that noise. That was the only way to meet that. But yeah. the new dead room does that, so it's going to be fine. And like I said, we actually got real soundproofing yeah. foam. Yeah. Uh, we I got, got that shit. Pop, pop, we pop, got a pop. folding shelf that yeah. comes out that we installed on the wall. Much better mic. And, uh, you know, so I can put yeah. the laptop and the microphone, like, yeah. right at height where I can, like, stand up and yeah. read. Which I prefer to read standing up because... I, cause when I read out loud, like yeah. I like to like move my hands. Cause you know, you guys that watch right. the show on YouTube, you know that I move my hands around a lot. Well, when, I'm when you go to a studio, we've been to real studios before for, you know, radio shows for and various stuff. things. You're yeah. standing up when you're doing that. Yeah. And that really helps voice actors a lot. Cause, cause you can move, you can, you can like, move, you, you can, can get you can into breathe. character. Right. When you're sitting, you're kind of like crunched up. And, yeah. You know and there were I mean? some complaints on, um, Part one and on all of them about the audio quality, so we're going to take care of that. I'm, I'm, you know, we're we're always endeavoring to improve our game. Yeah. And uh, even the read on um, Unseen Hand. There's a truck driver out there. I forgot your name, but if you're listening, yeah, he he said that your read was kind of dead, and that's my fault. I I did that. Yeah. Uh, it, a lot a lot of people now, you know, they want your kind of normal animated delivery that you do on the show. Yeah. I was thinking that Unseen... Except without all the copious swearing. Right. I was thinking that Unseen Hand might sound better if it was just real kind of dry and clinical. Yeah. But evidently, it's if you're a truck driver, it's not really a good listen. Well, people just want to so, listen to my right. my funny voice, I guess. Or my regular voice. Your regular it's not voice. my funny voice. Yeah. So, for Unseen voice. Hand... This is what I talk like all the time. Unseen Hand, in a couple months, an edition two will come out, and it'll, it'll be a, a better read. Yeah. Yeah. Ju- so we are a like juicier a juicier re- read. <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> a more voluptuous like... read. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm gonna use my sexy voice. Bah, bah, bah. My sexy voice. My phone yeah. sex voice. Mm-hmm. I don't have one of those. I don't know what you're talking about. But yeah. So uh, if the camera moves, uh, 
Yeah, yeah that's baby cookie. That baby cookie by, is behind my sleeping laptop. behind the camera. I think it did move. It actually. did move a little bit. Yeah. Put that one. She's uh okay. she obviously thought that was not a good angle. So yeah, uh, she's always like trying to. She's trying to improve the show, just okay, like so, we all are. So what's um, on the list here? Well, the only other uh the only other shout out that I had was just hey, if you haven't seen the last movie retrospective, it was Deep Red. Okay. Uh, otherwise known as Profondo Rosso, Dario okay. Argento's very famous Giallo movie. Yeah. So if you haven't seen that and you're into that kind of shit, then go yeah. back and watch that shit. And if you're a regular listener and you'd like to be a, a patron, please um, join us on Patreon. We're trying to reach $1,000 a month. We're actually at probably close to five 500 now. Huh? Yeah, we're getting close to 500 about, We're about halfway there. Yeah, so we're about halfway there. And like I said, I've really, really been making an effort to. Yeah. I post early access to all the shows now, like a day ahead of time. Um, you know, I'm trying to post like cute little videos. I posted yeah. one of you like before we yeah. were going out to the club and shit like that. We don't have that many patrons, but we have badass patrons. They pay a lot. Yeah. So a lot of these people are giving like $20 a month, 10 bucks a month. But, uh, you know, if you guys just want to come in for a 5 or a $3 a month or a $2 a month, you can just write it in. It's fine. It's like amazing that anyone yeah. gives anything. Like, I love that you guys, because I get messages all the time about how much you love us and everything like that. I'm like, yeah. that's so awesome. That's now, so awesome. if you guys only want to give like a dollar a month, you might want to reconsider that. I think because if it's if it's like a dollar, I think Patreon gets most of that. It's like, they do, but... The last I heard, I think they, they get like 75 cents of that. I mean, overall, so, though, it's like Patreon doesn't really take that big of a chunk out of... They're not taking that much anymore? Um, okay. You know, I don't really think of it in terms of like, oh, somebody just gives a dollar and they take 75 cents. Because okay. I, you know, I, I get it all as one, Okay. you know, lump sum. Because so. I remember hearing that people that paid a dollar for other people is just like Patreon gets most of that money anyway. Right. So, you, you know, you might as well not give. But, yeah. But, uh, you know... Two dollars is actually, I would think, probably. The, uh, when you give two dollars, at least we'll get one dollar. Yeah. You know. Which, like I said, not is, not a big difference between one dollar and two dollar on your end. Right. Yeah. That's, yeah. Exactly. Right. And like I said, I appreciate anybody giving it. It's so really, I appreciate anybody sharing the show or yeah. telling other people about the show. Shit, right. you don't even have to like give us money. It's like awesome right. that you do, but. You know, just yeah. and it just spreading the word around that helps too. Yeah, and merch has been uh, selling too. We yeah, got really cool shirts. You know, uh, we usually have links in the description. And I swear to God, I'm going to do more. I just we got to get more shirts. I just done. haven't got around to it. You guys, it's just. Yeah. And I, I know want... I say this every time, but it's like I'm so. I feel like I try to get ahead on shit. Yeah. And then she is so busy. Shit intervenes, and I'm just she is like so busy. Ah, I feel like been, I can never get ahead of stuff. She's been doing album covers. She's got. She just did another black metal album cover. She's doing all kinds of stuff. Packaging for uh, uh, Healing Butterfly, which is a. Uh, they make matcha tea. Matcha tea and just, turmeric she's stuff also. Busy. And that would that's just delicious. And they didn't even pay me to yeah, say that. It's but really uh, good. with your guys' help, you know, and hopefully with the book sales and everything, but maybe one day she can get away with from. Uh, Graphic design and go straight writing books. Yeah. Making audio books. I like doing graphic design, though. Like, yeah. I don't mind. I don't mind doing it because I do a lot of it for uh, for bands and for, yeah. you know, goth industrial. That's lights, actually like, the in fun the area. Shit. And yeah, yeah that's, that's fun. fun. I don't yeah. mind doing that. And it's yeah. like, you know what I mean? Yeah, I still need to get paid and shit like that because I got bills, you. But mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It's that stuff is a lot more enjoyable to do than graphic design isn't big money, but it's quick money. They pay you right then. Yeah. It's not like writing a book where you got to work for a year and it's going to be a year before you see anything on it. Yeah. yeah. But, you know. Hey. Money's money, man. One of these days, It's all man, about the hustle. Yeah. It's all about the <laughs> hustle. Everybody knows that in this new age. She's moving the camera again. Baby Cookie, why are you playing with the camera? Because she's okay. she's the camera woman. She's okay. the camera woman. Yeah. But, yeah, like I said, in this economy, you got to, man, you got to have yeah. side gigs going. It's like, I got three, well... Actually, my whole thing is side gigs. I'm all yeah, side gigs. You're all now. side gigs. Yeah. I don't have a full time job well, anymore. So am I. Because so I got I. I got laid off in uh, 2016. Yeah. And uh, after a couple shaky months of having no money, I actually stole a couple of graphic design clients from yeah. my old job. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so. the and a couple of the ones that I stole from them like gave me references to other yeah. ones that have been like some of my biggest clients. Well, that now. old job shut down graphic design. They weren't going to... They, they, well, that they, shit's closed now. It's closed now. It's gone. gone. We, yeah. went, we went by there. We don't usually go by there, but yeah. we went by there the other day and it's closed. Yes. I had a fig... I figured that was going to happen. So it's not like stealing. It's more like inheriting when you think about That's it. That's a good way of looking at it. Yeah. Because but yeah. They, they're gone. So you, yeah. you got their clients. 
And I was talking to somebody on YouTube about this, uh, that I always wanted to like work at home, have my own home office, shit like that. And I have that now. And that's awesome. Um, I thought that it would give me fr more free time. No. That was incorrect. No. Uh, I have much less free time. <laughs> but you're not commuting. True. Yeah. Yeah, because that was a lot of wasted time. Because I don't mean, have a boss except me. Yeah. And all I'm doing and is just trying my to and yeah, stupid exactly. brain. <laughs> exactly. Actually, all I'm doing that is just trying to figure out the what, what the what the market wants. Yeah. And you know, you know, you always need a second set of eyes on something. Yeah, so, it is know, good to have. Yeah. You know, but. It's, I can't complain because a lot of people, you know, and particularly, yeah. you know, if people want to get away from jobs, it's like, yeah. it's shaky because like I said, I don't know how much money I'm going to make per month. It's like some months I do really good. Some months I'm kind of worried about it. Um, but you have never failed to meet demands though. Yeah. You've always paid your bills. I always, I worry about, it. well, except for the, I had a couple shaky months, like I said, right after I first got laid off. That was off. a long time ago though. But that was a long time ago. That yeah. was a couple you years ago. You were still ago. in transition. Yeah. So, but other than that, I've been doing okay. Some months, like I said, I don't have any extra money. And I would like to be able to take a vacation at some point. That'd yeah, nice. it'll come soon. But Me, I'm on military pension. Yeah. Military pension he's, and all the He's living the do. sweet life, man. Yeah. I, get, I get my pay. <laughs> yeah, he just gets money no matter what. <laughs> I'm fully covered. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, me, I kind of got to yeah. hustle for every, like, every yeah. buck. But, you know. Yeah, that's all right. Well, you know, when you win a lawsuit against the U.S. government, you don't really, you know, don't look a, don't look a good no, tourist I, in the I mouth, just, man. <laughs> it took a long time to win that one, though. It did, yeah. yeah. You went through a lot of shit. I'm yeah. not saying that, but yeah, yeah. It's, but yeah, he's he's taken care of. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's yeah. he's got it all sorted <laughs> out. I'm hopeful. I'm hoping I'll get to that point one day. You're gonna exceed it. You're gonna exceed me. Me and you together are gonna create an empire. That's it's right. an empire. A, we're like of audio those, books. We're like one of those power couples yeah, like that a power you really couple, care about. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, do you want to talk about Nostradamus? It's time to talk about Nostradamus. Now, where? When did you first hear about Nostradamus? You know what? It was either. It was probably the first time that I saw, I don't know, I was going to say the, the first time I saw Man Who Saw Tomorrow. That's right. That saw. Orson Welles documentary, yeah. but that was like 1981, so it might have yeah. been earlier than that. I saw it in 81. That was before Mammoth Mountain Poltergeist happened. Wasn't yeah. It? And it was on HBO. And yeah. that that show just totally mesmerized me. Yeah. I believe, is she moving the camera again? Well, yeah, it's sure. just her butt is. Here, here, this could. She's not meeting I'm gonna put it. I'm going to put it over here. She's not meaning to. She's uh, doing it she, because she's back there like fucking around, like taking a bath and stuff. Yeah. And her little butt is just like scooting it. <laughs> is this about right? Okay. Yeah. She's right in the middle of the, she's moving the camera. Yeah. She's sitting on the cord is why. Yeah. Well, oh, she's, okay. a, she wants to be involved. That's all. She's making that noise. Yeah. She doesn't, um, she doesn't meow all that much. No, but she makes these weird purring. Noises. But she makes it. But she doesn't open her mouth though. She makes it's like in her throat. She goes. Brrr. Yeah. And then she does that for everything. Yeah. Yeah, we're talking about you. Yeah, she's looking around. And says, okay. But yeah, so I probably read about because, like I said, when I was a teenager, um, you know, when I was a kid, I was like super into like paranormal books and stuff like that. And Nostradamus was like especially in the seventies. There was yeah. all kind of like those paranormal like mysteries kind of books and it was like all kind of shit about Nostradamus in there. And I have to say too, it's like, I'm gonna show you right here. And I've probably shown this book, yeah, I'm taking it. Um, I've shown this book on a couple other episodes, Strange Stories, Amazing Facts. This is a Reader's Digest book. Came out in the 70s, 1974, I believe. Um, they have like this huge big spread in here on Nostradamus, which is probably the first place. Why don't you show it to the camera? Yeah, it's like Europe's Greatest Prophet right there. Mm. And then they have two pages of all his like quote unquote predictions that were super accurate. Got yeah. stuff about Napoleon. For you there. young whippersnappers, we used to have these things called books. They actually had pages. Books on are making a books. big They're comeback, comeback yeah. actually, print books. Yeah, I used to love those things. And, and, uh, Back before we had the internet, we'd read these books, and you didn't, you couldn't answer questions, of course, and you couldn't really do any research outside of this. So you were constantly left with questions when you'd read them, and they kind of gave you this eerie feeling that, that kind of, you know, that, well, what's a good way to put it? It was just, they were kind of eerie to read because yeah. you couldn't debunk it if it was bullshit, and you couldn't really confirm it if it was true. 
You just kind of had to take the book's word well, for it. Well, yeah, that was the thing. And, like, I remember when I read this shit when I was a kid. Yeah. Um, and all of these things. I'm like, man, that sounds legit. That dude was yeah. probably psychic and everything. Yeah. It's like, now you can, like, now look Now you it can up look deeper into it. Right? And be like, yeah, that probably wasn't. It's You know, that's just part of growing up, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> like, when you're a kid. Like, you read all this stuff. It's like, yeah, that sounds like it there could There was totally always be fake true. news. And that was... That's well, we'll get into it. We're going to get into that's it piece by new. piece. Nostradamus was a soothsayer, and that was a job back in his day. Yeah. Okay. Although he you, didn't start out as that. No, he did a bunch of other stuff. He was a scientist. It, it was kind of he was what they would have considered a scientist back in those days. He did. Um, here's the thing. He was. Uh, they usually call him a physician and an astrologer. Right. Although I should have to say, physician. I don't know how accurate that is. It didn't mean the same he, thing. Well, back then. and he never finished medical school. Like some sources said that he did. What was medic, medical school in the, in, in those well, yeah, areas? Yeah, I know. You know it's like, like putting leeches on people, yeah, and them, and so. stuff like that. But he never did finish medical school, so it wasn't like he. Most of his life, like before he started doing uh, the seer gig, uh, he actually worked as an apothecary. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of most of his youth was spent doing that kind of stuff, just like mixing up. Yeah, herbs we're talking and about shit the like 1500s. That. Yeah, yeah. You know, so. Uh, the st state of the art technology was very laughable. All right. If you could read Galen, you were a you were a doctor. Yeah. And if you know Galen wrote a lot of and stuff. And that was one of his first books was actually a translation of Galen. Yeah. So. And uh, you know, Galen, it Galen did have a good holistic philosophy. Uh, he didn't have a very good knowledge of internal organs. There's a lot of. Galen himself is an entirely big, uh, is an entirely different subject. We should do a show about that. We'd guy. have to do a show about him. Uh, but for nearly a thousand years, Galen was the go-to guy when it came to medicine, and it was because he wrote so much. But that was one of his downfalls. Galen wrote so much stuff that it contradicted itself. He wrote some every day because <laughs> he forgot some he shit forgot he wrote what like he wrote ten before. years ago. <laughs> All right, and a lot of stuff that he would write, he couldn't really back it up with scientific principle. They didn't really have the scientific method back then. But in general, Galen gave kind of good advice. Uh, if you were in the Middle Ages, or even you know you were in better hands with someone who had read Galen than someone who was just making shit up. I yeah. have to say that. You know what I mean? It wasn't modern medicine, but it was better, better than, than what the average person, you know. Because a lot of the medicine at the time, like, would actively harm would you. Would it hurt you? Yeah, it was bloodletting. Where it was probably better to do nothing. Right, right. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But you, that's the thing. I think we mentioned this before when we were, I don't remember what show we were doing, but we were talking about Galen and how he like wrote so much and everything. The problem with a lot of particularly medieval medicine and stuff like that is because a lot of it was, you know, what they would call today argument from authority. Right. Whereas, you know, someone in the ancient world said this. So therefore So they true. were just repeating it. Yeah. Um, they didn't have a scientific method. They couldn't check things yeah. themselves. And you in know, a everyone way, just said, oh, well, that's what he said. So that must be the case. In a way, Galen improved the situation but he also caused it to stagnate because if you said anything against the teachings of galen then you were just fucking wrong yeah well the problem was galen was wrong about a lot of shit yeah okay so uh eventually the scientific method disproved galen yeah which you know that deification way you... of authority figures right. is always like a bad idea yeah just saying and um <laughs> just off the top of my head i don't think Galen had much of a surgical knowledge. I don't remember and Not Galen. a lot of people did at the time. No. No. Although what was strange is that a lot, that there were ancient Roman surgeons that could actually do all kinds of stuff that uh, that, that the medievals couldn't. Even, they couldn't even do that in the, in the Renaissance. Uh, a lot of it had to yeah. do with sports medicine. That they could cut into a gladiator and fix tendons and you know actually repair damage i feel like they, the greeks and the romans had a lot of shit they were right yeah. um but then a lot of the knowledge was lost or it was lost yeah. or messed up like in the transition like library the of religious. alexandria got burned and a yeah. lot of the information was lost and never passed down but uh according to a, uh, accounts of the day ancient romans and ancient greeks could actually do uh cosmetic surgery 
like yeah. breast reductions and facelifts. That's fucking amazing. I wonder if that's really true. Yeah, evidently they could. And they did it without anesthesia. Oh, yeah. no, thank you. They just had very sharp scalpels. <laughs> they would give them wine. They'd get them drunk. Well. But that was that was their version of anesthesia. Although that's bad because that makes your blood, that well, thins your blood. Though. One of the things the Romans were about was doing breast reduction on men. Because rich guys Can't didn't have those want to man have, titties. Yeah, rich men did not <laughs> want to because they were they were gaining weight. They didn't want these man titties, so they would actually make incisions, get in there, and they pull fat out and they would suture it back up. And that would infer that they had to have had very, uh, they'd had to have a concept of sterilization. Yeah. Because you couldn't do that with dirty tools. You'd kill the guy from infection. Yeah. They definitely didn't have antibiotics, so that means that they knew about sterilization. Hmm. Which the medievals did not they seem didn't, to know no, about. Because no. they're just like, man, I'm just going to wipe my ass with this hand and, and then, then I'm going to reach gonna, it gonna right reach in your gut. You. Yeah, yeah. Why did he die? I can't figure I it out. Know. I don't yeah. know, man. Right. Just God wanted it that way, I guess. But well, yeah. let's get around. Let's get back so, to... Uh, all right. So Nostradamus, very famously, born Michel de Nostradam mm -hmm. in 1503. Uh, not sure of the exact date of his. It was either December 14th or December 21st. Uh, he was born in Provence. Now, not a lot is known about his youth. Um, and I discovered that much of the, like a lot of the stories that kind of circulate about his upbringing, about his youth and stuff like that, um, don't really have any sources to support them. One of the sources, There's a lot of legendary stuff. About one of the his. sources that I remembered said that his history was vague because it is. he was probably Jewish. He was Jewish. Okay. They do know that. In those days, well, they tried to kind of... His family was Jewish, but yeah. had converted to Catholicism, right. either in his father's right. generation or his grandfather's. Which may, which may explain why his past was kind of clouded, because in those days, if you had a Jewish past, you might want to not talk about that, because it's better, yes. to, it's better to reinforce your new Catholic identity. That seems to be the case. And right. like I said, I, I've seen, like, because I read, you know, read the Wikipedia page, I read the Britannica page, I read, like, pages from believers, pages from spe yeah. skeptics, stuff like that. The, the sources seem to say the family was Jewish, but either yeah. in his father's generation or his grandfather's, they converted to Catholicism, probably right. to avoid persecution. Yeah, now here's... Which a lot of families did at the time. Now here's a thing for the, for, uh, for the modern people to understand. Uh, when you talk about um, when you talk about Jews hiding their past, this was not a racial thing. This was a religious thing, because the Jews and the Catholics were basically they were the same race. They had been in that same area for you know, two, fifteen hundred years, almost two thousand years. So this wasn't really a racial thing. It was all about religion. Yeah. Even during the uh, uh, you know during the time of Tokamata. They were trying to just get Jews to convert to Catholicism. They weren't trying to wipe out people based on race. Yeah. Just making that clear. But the thing about, like I said, that's pretty standard, like, you know, about his history. Most people, uh, you know, accept that. Yeah. Um, now, a lot of shit will say that in his youth, he was uh, taught by his grandfathers or his maternal grandfather who taught him about the Kabbalah and stuff like that. There is no contemporary source to support that. Um, so they're not really sure about much of anything like s from his childhood, you know, cause there's all this stuff about, oh, he was a super intelligent student and all this other kind of stuff. There's all these legends like surrounding his childhood. Um, but there's no contemporary sources to support that. Now they do know that he entered the university of Avignon in, uh, when he was 14 years old, uh, in order to study medicine. However, he was only there for a year. Uh, but then the um he left because there was like an outbreak of the plague and like you know i guess a lot of they were closing down the school or whatever now he started working as an apothecary at about this time later on he went to get his doctorate but he was only at the school for you know a short time before apparently the university found out that he had been an apothecary which was considered quote unquote a manual trade uh yeah. which wasn't something that they endorsed so they kicked him out yeah so he, he never did get and they do have the expulsion notice it is on record um so that is a fact that he was kicked out of medical school 
before yeah. he obtained his doctorate. So he never became like an actual doctor. He never got the. And in doctorate. case you don't know what an apothecary is, an apothecary is is basically an old fashioned pharmacist. Yeah. It's basically what they did. They made medicine. Yeah. And it seems like he kind of went around doing that kind of thing where he right. was like into like herbal metals, medicines and like kind of traveling around like making medicines. Now, like I said, there's a lot of legends about him after he got kicked out of school, like where he was going around combating the plague. There's a lot of um, kind of apocryphal stories about how ahead of his time it was. It's like, oh, he refused to bleed patients. Um, he knew about hygiene like he was like hey everybody needs to wash their hands and yeah. do this and that and the other i'm not sure how true the, any of that is because like i said there are no contemporary su sources yeah. of, they're just trying to make it seem like he was like super ahead of his time um he did invent uh something it was like a loz lozenge it was called a rose pill uh that supposedly uh, it was made from rose hips, which has vitamin C in it, apparently, yeah. and supposedly was like helpful to plague victims yeah. or whatever. A lot of the reason why authors are making these claims about him is because evidently he had a high customer satisfaction rate. Yeah. Which meant that many of his people probably survived. Yeah. If they survived, then he must have been doing the right but thing. But they might have survived anyway. Yeah, like, we, don't, don't, we don't know. We don't know. We that. don't know. Right. But what they're inferring is, well, he was popular because his 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 uh, patients survived. Therefore, he must have been pretty clean. Yeah. He must have been doing things uh, uh, correctly, things that other guys weren't doing correctly, and that were ending up with bad, you know, results. Yeah. Which usually not washing your damn hands had a lot to do with it. It's Cutting really in. funny to me how yeah. long it took for people to figure out that just washing your hands would save like 80% yeah. of your patients. Yeah. <laughs> just don't stick your shit covered hands into right. people's abdomens. No concept, no concept of microbiology. If you couldn't see it, it didn't exist. That yeah. was really the yeah. thinking of the time. Although so. they believed in like demons and angels and God and yeah. stuff, and you can't see that. But they just couldn't. So you'd think they could have extrapolated, the, but they never did. The idea of single-celled organisms, you know, infecting people that just wasn't, wasn't in them. That must have seemed like weird, like magic yeah. or something. Like I eventually, feel like if somebody had said that at the time, they'd have been like. Eventually, the, the microscope came. I think that was 1600s. I'm not sure. I, oh just no, I think that was 1700s. 1700s. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But. Uh, I think, uh, if I remember, if I remember correctly, there were theories in the 16, 15 and sixteen hundreds of microorganisms, but it wasn't proven until later on when they had microscopes and they could yeah. say, "There they are." Yeah. But uh, it's like, see, I'm not yeah. crazy. There's little bitty things. Right, but it just would have been advanced theory. It would have been almost like quantum physics back in those days. You know, something could be so small you can't see it, and it might attack. Yeah, but it's you. like, no. Yeah, no. no. Yeah. What are you talking about? Mm. I'm just going to stick my dirty ass hands in people's mm -hmm. balls. You know what I mean? But yeah, so apparently, uh, so at this stage, he's traveling around Europe with his apothecary stuff and everything like that. Now, he did marry and have two children, um, but apparently they all died. Presumably because of the plague, uh, which killed, you know, a large percentage of people at yeah, the time. Yeah, it was ravaging through Europe many yeah. times. Yeah, so he did marry again later on and have uh, more children, but this was something that... And I've, I've watched some documentaries about him. There was actually one that was made for, I believe, the Discovery Channel that was actually kind of critical of his stuff, and it was, like, pointing out, like, mistakes and his prophecies and stuff like that. But it still repeated a lot of the bio uh, the biographical information about him that is not uh, sourced. It's, you know what I mean? It's Most of it's based on stuff that was written much later. Yeah. You know, all these kind of stories about Which him. Which means legend. Yeah. So, uh, like I said, I don't think anybody knows much of anything about him before he started writing like yeah. his prophecies, you we know. Basically, what I mean? have his books and yeah. his reputation. Yeah, I think a lot of his reputation actually comes from him, though. I think he's the source of some it's, of his reputation. Yeah, and I don't know. Like, okay, we talked about this a little bit on our Edgar Casey show, which, yeah. um, you know, he was another guy. It's it's kind of different because he didn't really make future prophecies. He just mostly made like medical diagnoses and things. But um, I feel like. Edgar Casey, I'm willing to give him the benefit of the doubt because I don't think he was deliberately trying to defraud anyone. Nostradamus, I'm not so sure. Yeah, well, there was a certain, there was a way to make money back then. Maybe we can get yeah. into that later. He, I think he knew what he was doing because I he was using like a method. Too. He was yeah. 
very much using a method for soothsaying. Although maybe he believed in that. Maybe he believed he would. He might was... have believed it, sure. Yeah, yeah. Now, his whole thing was that, you know, after the death of his family and the plague and whatnot, or so the story goes, he starts getting more into the occult. Now, there's been a lot made of the fact that, like, oh, he had to, like, write these quatrains and, like, this weird, uh, like, like, he would mix up languages and he wrote, like, poetically, so, like, he would get away from the Inquisition, but I don't feel like the Inquisition really had him in its sights, um... You know, astrology was uh, pretty, a pretty respected science at the time. It wasn't seen as yeah, wasn't heretical seen as or anything yeah. like that. Um, I don't think he was doing anything that really would have brought him to the attention of the Inquisition. Plus, his clientele was wealthy. That, too. And the church wouldn't want to step on their toes, a lot, you know, yeah. over stuff like this. Like, just... every now and then, he would get, like, brought in and stuff. But it's like no, it seemed like nothing major. Um, you know what I mean? It's, it just seems like... Well, they probably wanted kickbacks. The church yeah. did that kind of stuff a lot. Right. I feel like that was kind of right. the extent of it. I mean, he, he never got arrested. He never got... It wasn't like Galileo, where he got, right. like, put in hell, like, you know, prison or anything like that. Well, Nostradamus wasn't saying anything that challenged the authority of the church. Yeah, exactly. And he was, uh, you know, a lifelong Catholic. You know, yeah. he always kind of came... He, so he didn't really have any beef with, like, the Catholic church. It doesn't seem like, and they didn't really seem to have any beef with him. Um, I don't think he was any particular danger of being burned at the stake or anything like that with the shit he was coming up with. But, and besides that, like the shit he was coming up with is so fucking yeah. vague <laughs> that yeah. it could have like, applied to anything. It's conceivable knowing the history of the church, what would happen is, is that he's doing things that are kind of, kind of slightly questionable. Maybe it's good to bring him in and have him questioned and make it make Look sure like, that he, yeah. make sure that he makes a donation to the church. Yeah. You know, the church was about money. Yeah, they're just kind of like, hey, maybe we'll burn you yeah. at the stake if you don't like. They're like, hey, no, Thomas, what you been up to? Uh, is this stuff godly? It is. Okay. Well, why haven't you given to the church? Oh, yeah. you given to the church? Okay, good. Yeah. Okay, make your donation. I'm there. Fuck out of here. Yeah. Yeah, because the church wanted their cut. Yeah. Well. Yeah. They, always. Church. Always the church wants to right. <laughs> Even hundreds of years so later. So I think that was probably like the, ex based on my memory, I haven't read about you, you're the one that's re done the research recently. Based on my memory, the church didn't really want anything from him. So he was in good standing. Yeah, like I said, he got brought in like once or twice on like minor shit, but then they Money. were just like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. That just was like, just, you pay just us. get out of here. Pay us. And because yeah. I feel like, like I said, astrology was not verboten. Um, you know, the shit he was doing was not really mm -hmm. not was not sanctioned i mean astrology was fine they yeah. that was a science that was time. a science then so yeah. it, it wasn't like he wasn't like indulging in magic or anything like that or witchcraft or anything <clears throat> like that they didn't see it like astrology that. astrology had been a sign i'm doing the quotation air quotes <laughs> scientology excuse me <laughs> it had been a science going all the way back to the greek era yeah uh, you know so so they didn't the see church, it as, The church wasn't threatened by that. Right. They didn't see it as anything no. particularly supernatural. No. Um, you know, like I said, later on, he actually married again. He married a wealthy yeah. uh, woman named Anne Ponsard, and they had six children. Um, and then at this stage, he started uh, publishing books. Now, there is one apocryphal story that I wanted to mention because this was one that comes up in a lot of, like, uh, you know, paranormal stuff that's about uh, Nostradamus. That one time in his youth, at some unspecified time, he walks up to this lowly friar, or like a monk, uh, whose name was, where is it, whose name was uh, Felice Peretti, and he like bends down and like starts kissing his robe and stuff, and everyone's like, what the fuck are you doing, man? And it's like, mm -hmm. you know, why are you kissing it's just this little friar or whatever? And he's like, oh, I have to pay my respect to the Pope or whatever. And then like later on, that became guy Pope, became yeah. Pope Sixtus V. But you know what I mean? That That's kind of a thing that was written later on. Yes, yeah, so you don't know if that was written retroactively. You know, I think you everything first... about him was. Yeah. There's not a lot of contemporary, because here's the thing. 
Um, in the 1970s, there was like all these books, uh, you know, actually the first one, the best known one that came out, uh, came out in 1947 and was reprinted like many times over the ensuing decades. And then there were a couple other ones came out in the sixties and seventies and stuff. And I think a lot of that stuff repeated a lot of the stories from his youth and all of this kind of stuff, like of his early biography and a lot of his, um, you know, predictions, but in the 1980s, they actually found like a cache of like his personal correspondence. Um, they found a lot of the first editions like of his work and stuff like that. So a lot of the stuff that is commonly repeated about Nostradamus is not um, evident in the contemporary source, like when he was alive. So in other words, it's more legend. So it's more, it was stuff that came about like later, like yeah, after right. he was dead, like other yeah. writers that were referring back to him, you know, kind of made up Well, he on. had a reputation, so we yes. have to assume that after his death, people would, could have made money writing books about Nostradamus. And they did. Right. Yes. So you can say, oh yeah, Nostradamus, he did this and this and that, and there's no source for it. Yeah. Because here's the, here's the thing, and I've even seen this on several documentaries about him. They said that... One of the ways he would get his predictions about the future was that he would um, do what they call scrying, where he would look into like a bowl of water, right. you know, you know, which is essentially like a crystal ball type of thing. Right. And he would look in there and have these visions about the future. Now, the only contemporary source, like he had written kind of a letter um, talking about how he got his visions. Um, and the only thing that he said was he's like, it was like that. He didn't say that he actually did that. He said it was kind of like the old like Delphic Oracle where right. they would look into this bowl of water. He's like, it was like that, but not. You know what I mean? So I think people were like taking it too literally. You know what okay. I'm saying? Um, so we don't know if he actually looked into a bowl of water. Or yeah. He, okay. it, it doesn't. He never also mentioned heard that it. Maybe he in looked any into a flame too. Some people have said that too. But. Right. Like I said, the only reference to that in his actual writings, like from the time he was alive, okay. um, he was just comparing it to that. Okay. He just said, you know, like the Delphic Oracle, right. you would look into like a bowl of water, you would look into a flame or something. He's like, it's like that. He's putting himself but, into a trance, he's looking into something. Yeah. Basically, what he would do was meditate, and then he would right. like have these ideas, and then he would write them down. Now, another thing that a lot of people don't know about Nostradamus is that a lot of the shit that he wrote he straight up ripped off from other authors. Yeah. He took a lot of his predictions from Revelation, obviously, but also from a lot of other uh, classical writers, Suetonius, Plutarch. Mm. Um, there was one book in particular, which was called the Mirabilis Liber. I hope I'm pronouncing wow. that correctly, uh, which was kind of a compilation of like a lot of uh, prophecies, predictions and stuff like that. And this book was actually quite famous in the 1520s, but because um, a lot of it was kind of inscrutable and it had like kind of like a lot of these weird things, it's it's um, its legacy didn't really last. So Nostradamus had read it and he actually ended up kind of paraphrasing a lot of its prophecies mm. and publishing them to French later on. And a lot of people didn't realize that that was what he was paraphrasing. And we don't really know where this book came from. Well, they know when it was published. It was published okay. in 1522, okay. and it was like a compilation of like different prophecies by different by various people. Do they know where those prophecies came from, or is this? Could this uh, thing yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, they do. Yeah. Okay. So, <coughs> so he kind of um, he took a lot from that. So a lot of his work was not original. Let's just say that okay. he was just like he's compiling. Taking, he's compiling things from other sources, translating them into French, and then writing these kind of like vague <coughs> quatrains um okay. you know and obviously if you know anything about nostradamus which most people do um he wrote you know he started out writing kind of like medical books like medical yeah. cookbooks he, like i said he did a translation of galen uh then after that he wrote, started writing almanacs um and he started writing those in you know around the like 1510s 1511 something like that and he started writing those like every year. Sometimes he'd do more than one a year. And he started like putting prophecies into his almanacs. And they were so popular that he decided, well, I'm just going to do like a whole series <coughs> of books about prophecies that he was going to call, you know, the prophecies. And he put them into 
what he called centuries. Yeah, and these are what he's really known for. For the next couple thousand years. And right. that is obviously what he's still known for to right. this day. Now, the So this is his original material. Right. So he starts off kind of like paying homage to the, uh, well, to the lot, prophets that came before him and well, prophecies that came before him. A lot of these compiling. ones are still okay. that. Okay, so it, it, when he starts getting into this, writing his own centuries, he's rebooting prophecies from authorities that he respects? Yes. Is that what you're saying? Okay. Yes. Okay. And it should be noted, too, that, and here's something that a lot of skeptics have said about Nostradamus's quote-unquote prophecies, is that, okay, now the problem being that none of his original editions survive like probably there are some that came out while he was still alive i, I believe only one of his uh centuries uh compilations was published while he was alive the other ones were published after he was dead um and the problem is that people that you know in recent times that have tried to translate these prophecies and kind of make them fit you know, particular events in history. Uh, one, they don't know anything about 16th century French. Um, right. There's another thing too, is that Nostradamus would often write in not just straight 16th century French, but he would mix in Latin and, uh, you know, Provençal, which was kind of like his, uh, you know, local dialect. Um, he, he would mix in Greek. He would sometimes mix in anagrams, according to some sources, because uh, he didn't want to get in trouble uh, for doing this particular thing. That's usually the reason given. So these, um, these quadrains that he writes, I have seen wildly different translations right. of these. If you ask me, though, I think he's doing that on purpose. So you yeah. can... So you can make alternate, can fit, yeah, alternate interpretations of them. Yeah, you know what I mean. That that way it increases increases your chance of getting a hit. Yeah. Yeah. And like I said, I watched one documentary that was made for the Discovery Channel, and uh, uh, Richard Wiseman, who is a very uh, famous psychologist, and he's written several books, uh, many of which I've read. He said on this documentary, he's like, "We're gonna play uh, Nostradamus Roulette." He's yeah. like, whereas I'm going to pick one thing. I think it was 23 red or something like that. And I'm just going to keep spinning until I get it. Right. <laughs> He's like, because that's what you do. It's like you give long enough time because he didn't really date any of his stuff. There was only a couple that were dated. Yeah. Um, he's like, you give it enough time. Something that right. vaguely sounds like that is going to happen. Yeah. I mean, if you deal with fortune tellers, you know, the more vague you are, the, more the you... better off. I you mean, are. if I can just go up to you and go, look, you will meet a man. Whoa. Whoa! Yeah. Well, we all meet. How would you know that? If, if female yeah, that or could male, mean, we all meet men. Yeah, that you could know, mean anything. Can mean mean anything. Just that uh, you know, a lot of his. Well, I'm not getting into that next. I'm not <laughs> into that. It's, too early, it's too early. I like Nostradamus. I think he was very stylish. Okay. Um, yeah. His writings, I think, were intriguing. Uh, there was a lot of stuff that he wrote that just, if you interpret it a certain way through English, through the English language. It sounds awful close, uh, but well, we, but the statistics thing statistics are involved. Yeah. yeah, and like I said, right. even just okay. So this book that I showed you at the beginning that came out yeah. in 1974, 1976, I can't remember, but it has like some translations of the quatrains, yeah. and they are wildly different from the ones that I saw on various other websites. They are wildly different from the ones I saw in various documentaries about uh nostradamus including the including the man who saw tomorrow so these are very um you know the the vague way because here's the whole here's the thing nostradamus apparently believed that history he was an astrologer first and foremost even though other astrologers at the time thought that he was full of shit and he was doing it wrong oh yeah I but didn't know that. yeah so in his day they were they were bagging on him. Yeah. Okay. Even in the day. Okay. But his whole thing was that he believed that history and astrology were cyclical, which isn't entirely wrong. But it does seem to be cyclical. Yeah, but so the whole thing that he would do was that if he wanted to quote unquote predict some shit, <laughs> he would look into the past 
to when the astrological, um, you know, when the planets were aligned in a similar Same kind way. of way. Right. And he's like, okay, well, X thing happened when those planets were aligned. So maybe in the future, when those planets are aligned again, a similar shit will happen. Right. So if you're like reading some of his quatrains, a lot of them seem to refer to shit that happened in the past, like mm. before he was born. Um, and that's on purpose because he thought that things would repeat again and again. So what he would do when he was trying to predict the future was that he would go back to past events that happened at that particular time. And then he would project it forward okay. into the future. Right. And Which like is I actually said, is very scientific from his point of view. It is kind of. Yeah. And actually it kind of works out because in a way history is kind of cyclical. Yeah. And if you couch it in vague enough terms, right. then you know, many years down the line, people can interpret, you know, a right. various thing that he said, because I've, a lot of his shit was really vague. And he's like, oh, yeah, that can refer to this, that and the other. I've looked at this cyclical nature in history, and I think a lot of it has to do with generations. Yeah, it's more generational uh, more than anything else, you know, but let's, let's keep going. Yeah. So, you know, what I'm saying, like I said, the, the most popular books about Nostradamus, you know, in the 20th century didn't start coming out until the late 1940s. And then, you know, there were a bunch of other ones kind of interpreted. And like I said, they all have kind of slightly different interpretations of a lot of his quatrains, which a lot of linguists have kind of shit on because they're like, you know, you are reading into these quatrains probably something that he didn't intend you were like twisting things because it should be noted that even though these are supposedly prophecies nobody ever never read one of nostradamus's prophecies and knew exactly what that was like before it happened it's right. always after, after the fact right and then they're like, oh, he must have been talking about that. Oh, right. he must have been talking about the French Revolution. Oh, he must have been right. talking about... So it's useless for prediction. Right. Which, useless. in a way, why right. is that? It, that's not it any good. It has to come to pass in order, in order for you to be able and to stuff it into you, one of those. Right. 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 And I feel like... I mean, I've read some of these sites. I've read some of this shit. And some of this shit, it's a reach. It's yeah. a big fucking rage. Okay, well, maybe we should do that in the second half. Well, uh, what I want to say, too, yeah. is that, and here's one thing. It just is an example before we okay. go to the break. Okay. So one of the prophecies that is super, super famous was this whole thing about the death of Henry II. Okay. And this was allegedly, um, you know, the stories will tell you, this is the prophecy that brought him to the attention of Catherine de' Medici. Mm -hmm. Um, who became his patron and a big supporter of his later on and shit like that. Because he came up with this verse that had something about, you know, the young lion on the field of battle yeah. and like the, the gold cage, cage and the piercing cage. the yeah, eyes yeah, yeah. and stuff. Which Henry, you remember that from the movie. You remember right, right, right. that from Man Who Saw Tomorrow. And Henry II yeah. did indeed die in a jousting match, um, yeah. you know, where he was pierced through the eyes, through his, uh, you know, the, the visor of his helmet. Um, and he died like later on, like nine, 10, 11 days later. Um, so it seems to fit. But the problem with that is that one, Catherine de' Medici couldn't have read that uh, supposedly at the time because the first time it appeared in print was 55 years after that shit happened. So in other words, it's a fake quatrain. It's not fake. He did write it. Okay. But he didn't write it before that time or it wasn't published before that time that that anyone has ever found so the whole story about catherine de medici reading that and thinking it was about henry the second oh, okay oh right. thinking it's about her husband right that can't be true because it, it wasn't published because it wasn't published until okay. much late until more than but 50 that quatrain, years after that. that quatrain was written it was before. yeah okay just it was written or just that the idea that catherine Medici knew, knew, anything knew about, about it, it is that's bullshit yeah because she couldn't have been, because like I said, first time it appeared in print, 1614. Mm -hmm. That was the first time they've ever found that it okay. appeared in print. Uh, and that was 55 years after the death of Henry II. But you must admit, that does sound like that event. It does sound it like does that, sound but like, that like I said, a lot of his shit, yeah, a lot of his if you apply can sound like anything, right, yeah. after the fact, right, yeah. yeah, it sounds like it. Because but it's you can't predict anything yeah, with it. Yeah. So it's not any good. No. You have to wait for something to happen, and then you have to stuff it into that descript right. description. Like I said, right. if you're going to do, like, a prophecy... And here, and here you go. Give me names, dates, 
Give and me this, all that this shit. This is what I always Beforehand. thought. This, this is what I always thought. If you knew what you were doing, you could write things down and make statements that eventually some shit would fit into that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just If you were vague enough. And could, that's exactly and what I think. If enough Buster time had did. passed, eventually it would do that. Now, do I think he believed that he was doing it? I sure. think he did. I do, I do think that he believed yeah. in it. I just think that he didn't realize the method, how the method worked. I think he I mean, thought it was paranormal, but it was more statistical. You know yeah, what I'm about? and like I said, that was the point that Richard Wiseman was trying to make, right. was that, you know, if you make a vague enough statement, statistically, shit like that will, will happen, happen at some right. point that people, after the fact, can go like, oh, that sounds so like I think, that. I think me and you are kind of aligning on this, because right. Jenny and I haven't confirmed on this. Confirmed <laughs> on this. I never thought Nostradamus was a charlatan. Not really. I think he really believed in what he was doing. He did. But I didn't think he knew why it worked. Because you're dealing with a guy of the 1500s. They didn't have a real tight understanding of statistics, I don't think. You know yeah. What I mean? If you said things a certain way and had certain, you know what I mean? Yeah. You could call that a fortune or a prediction, and eventually something might fit that. Well, and like I said, because he believed I mean, I that he events believe in the past... Right. would repeat in the future right and because he kept his predictions vague they were usually about right. battles or murders or you know right. bad shit it was usually which, or disasters which that lends more credence to my opinion to that nostradamus believed in what he was doing because if he yeah, didn't believe I think he, was he, doing, did. he just would have bullshitted yeah and he wasn't just bullshitting he was trying to actually stick to a method he was so he believed in what he was doing. I yeah, I right? do believe that. I yeah. don't think he was like he, he purposely was, setting yeah. out to fool I. people into Neither thinking he really did believe that yeah. was the method. History is cyclical, so I'm going to look back at the past. This event happened in the past, so it will yeah. happen again in the future. It would future. have been much easier just to fake it. And he wasn't yeah. he wasn't taking that route. He was actually trying to get it to conform to a methodology. Yeah. Right. But, you know, like I said, because he kept things right. poetical and vague. Yeah. Um, and you're dealing with the mentality. And time. referring to kings and royal fa- and strife and, in royal families and, and things like that, which happens again and again. And, and you're, he dealing with a about. Fi- you're dealing with a 1500s mentality. Their view on reality was a lot different than ours. You know, but I, I, I don't, I'm not going to say he's a fake. I'm not going to say he's a charlatan. He, I think he really believed in what he was doing. I'm yeah. just gonna say that, you know. I well, I think that too. Right. Because like been, I said, I'm not saying were, he's not wrong. I'm just easy, saying he did were, believe in it. There were easier ways to fake it. Yeah. He actually, if you want to say he faked it, he faked it the hard way. The hard way. Yeah. Which there's no reason <laughs> to do it that way. That's what I mean. I think he really did believe in the yeah. method and believe in what he was doing. Which my superstitious ass, in a certain way, might come around. Well, there may be something to it. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> let's take a break. Let's take a break. All right. All yeah. right. So we're going to take a break right now. We will be back in just a few minutes and talk some more about Nostradamus and his prophecies. <laughs> the Faceless Villain, a collection of the eeriest unsolved murders of the 20th century, volume two includes cases spanning the years from 1960 through 1979, featuring such infamous crimes as the triple homicide at Lake Bodum, the family massacre known as the Good Heart Murders, the serial killings of the Zodiac, Bible John, Jack the Stripper, and the Freeway Phantom, the slaughter of dozens of women and girls along the Highway of Tears and the Texas Killing Fields, and the mysterious death of suspected spy, the Isdal Woman, along with dozens of other fascinating and horrifying accounts. Buy it now from Amazon in print, Kindle, or audiobook format. Wasting away in baby Cookieville, <laughs> looking for my lost lizards and frogs. <laughs> Some say it's the weather's to blame, but I know <laughs> ain't no more damn frogs. Yeah, there's no frogs out there. No. See. Okay, everybody, Jenny's got some new shirt designs up, four of them. Really good ones, too. Atlanta Ripper, Who Put Bella in the Witch Elm, the H.H. Holmes Murder Castle, and, of course, Demon Child, because man said he could. These are updated designs. I think they look really cool. Jenny did a great job on them. Were they fun making, Jenny? They were very fun, and thank you very much. I think they came out very good. Yeah, they're really good. They're very high-quality shirts. Jenny and I wear shirt, uh, our own shirts at, at certain times when we're trying to put a spotlight on ourselves, and you can put a spotlight on yourselves. 
If you go ahead and pick up one of these shirts today, you guys are going to love them. Links in the description, www.zazzle.com at 13 o'clock. Yeah, so go check out our store at www.zazzle.com slash 13 o'clock. We got these four cool new t-shirt designs plus all our old ones if you'd rather get one of the old ones. But these ones are awesome and you should check them out. They're also available in women's cut and they look really cute. JD's got some. So thank you. Go check them out. All right, we're back. Mm -hmm. Look at him drinking his Kukulkan. Yeah, and, and, and vaping. Is that your second one? Uh, No, same one. Oh, okay. Holy same shit. one. Yeah, talking about Nostradamus. Yeah. Not speaking views with Nostradamus. That's right. Or Nostradamus. <laughs> uh, Although I guess a case could be made for the yeah. second thing. So, uh, you know, on this portion of the show, I want to kind of talk about some of his predictions and how they turned out should we talk about how he uh, died yeah well just a little bit because it wasn't okay. really that interesting look okay. nostradamus probably not that unusual for somebody who just sat around all the time um he had suffered from gout yeah uh and arthritis for most of his life uh so he actually ended up dying of what they used to call the dropsy which is like edema. It's like fluid, like uh, accumulating, like in your body cavities and shit like that. What's so that from? Um, from just sitting around, being sitting around like, doing I nothing. Guess. I don't being know. Being inactive. Yeah. I guess, like I said, you just sitting around being like scholarly and making prophecies. Yeah, well, stuff. a lot of those, a lot of those archaic um, diseases are not. Re we don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Well, for because we know, nobody lives can. like that anymore. And it could have been cancer, for all we know. Plus, like, the environment that they lived in, it's like, this yeah. is what I love about people that want to, like, go back to the Middle Ages and stuff. No, you don't, no. because... Yeah, you don't know what they, they were doing. Yeah, it's like they people lived that lived filth. back then. Yeah, there was just, like, every, there was poop everywhere. There was, yeah. like, I mean, there's poop everywhere now, like, poop molecules, as the <laughs> as, as, as the Mythbusters showed. Yeah, it's... Every, yeah. But, you know, there was, like, literal poop yeah. everywhere. People, Nobody wants that. People used to piss behind the curtains. Yeah, and there's yeah. like poop in the water supply. They didn't think anything of it. Just drink it. Don't be a pussy. So you know what I mean? So yeah. it's, it's no wonder that people there's were no... dying at 35. Seriously. Yeah. How but old yeah. was he when he died, more or less? I don't know. He died in like uh, 1566. So, he's so he was 63? Yeah. Okay. Something like that. Which was an old man for those days. Yeah, I guess it was. Yeah. I mean, some people lived a long time, but he didn't. Mm -hmm. 63. So yeah, he died. And the, the story goes that... The night before he died, he told his secretary, oh, I'm not going to live to see tomorrow, blah, blah, blah. And then the secretary yeah. came in and found it. But, you know, I think the secretary kind of made that up, like, later on. Legend. He'd be like, yeah. ooh, he's like, he prophesied his own death. Yeah, no, no way to prove that, though. Yeah. So, let's talk about what Nostradamus is most famous for, which is all his prophecies. And we'll talk about The Man Who Saw Tomorrow, very famous Orson Welles documentary. The funny thing about that, I watched it again today because I hadn't seen it since I was a kid. Um... This came out in 1981 when I was nine years old and I saw it on fucking HBO or Cinemax yeah. or whatever. And it seemed totally legit. The funny thing now is like when I'm reading about it, Orson Welles and the producer of this documentary mm -hmm. thought it was all bullshit. They did. They yeah. were just doing it because, okay. hey, paycheck. Yeah. Well, hey, you know, I think that was on, that was on the tail of, um, there was a really Famous movie called The Late Great Planet Earth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that made a lot Hal of Lindsay. money. Hal Lindsay. Hal Lindsay made yep. a lot of money. It freaked a lot of people out in the theater. Evidently, some people couldn't sit through it. They had to leave early and people walking out from fright. So I think um, uh, The no Man Who Saw Tomorrow was actually just a response to uh, Late Great Planet it Earth. It did seem like that, it yeah. Was because like, it, was, yeah. it was very much... Like, it seemed like, it was like an hour and a half long, and like, yeah. you know, they're going very much into, like, look at all the predictions that he made that came true. Yeah. And like I said, the, the translations that they had were kind of different than other ones I'd read, but they, you know, they kind of sounded like they legitimately predicted stuff. And then they're kind of like, oh, the world's going to end, because this came out in 1981. Yeah. Oh, the world's going to end in 1999. Because... Well, actually, if I remember correctly, it said... It remember said, when the world in ended 1999, in 1999? Uh, what was it? The Great King, King of, of Terror, Terror from that, the sky, from the size on the new city, and it does. It sounds like he's talking about the nine eleven, and, and the World Trade Center. Right, but they even in the movie, in the movie, they actually showed the twin towers and a and, and what well, looks like a missile coming down. Yeah, the problem was that. Well, there are a lot of problems. problems the movie was, predicted it, not yeah, the quatrains. Yeah. <laughs> 
the the problem is like a lot of the quatrains like i said have been mistranslated um you know very famously the whole line the king of terror yeah they think Tiger that Tiger in the blue turban well they think yeah. that that might be a mistranslation because they're like you guys look it's like you know the the printing press had just been invented like when nostradamus was still alive right so they could disseminate his works to a wider audience but the printing press still had to be you still had to put in like all the little type by hand you're right yeah so when they printed the stuff like some of the later editions and um some of the scholars of the time were like you know none of the editions are the same there okay. are misspellings there because you had to put the little letter each letter in there yeah. by hand um, and particularly in French, if you leave out like an apostrophe or something like that, it's like a totally different right. meaning. Um, and apparently the whole King of Terror thing was an apostrophe issue. Okay. Um, like when there's an apostrophe in there, it could mean, yes, King of Terror. When there's not an apostrophe, it just means something like the host or the host king or something like that. It means something kind of innocuous. But Nostradamus predicted it. He predicted the apostrophe error to give us <laughs> to, to give us the man who saw tomorrow. He even foresaw Orson Welles. Holy shit, dude. Even Orson Welles. Meta. Orson Welles ended up predicting the future. All right. Yeah. He passed it off. He's like, Pat, you know... <laughs> if you're gonna if you're gonna pass the ball or pass the torch on to somebody else, you're gonna pass it on to Orson. Well, yeah. Well, the, he yeah. see that was the big thing, and I was telling him earlier that I had yeah. totally forgotten about this until I was yeah. researching the show again tonight. I watched the Man Who Saw Tomorrow because I hadn't seen it since I was a kid, yeah. and I forgot mm. that in 1999, 1991 yeah. rather, they re not remade it, yeah, they but remade. they re edited it. Yeah, with Charlton Heston. Charlton Heston with the Hest. They had to yeah, the Hest with the Hest, like saying all of Orson Welles' lines. They made it much shorter. They only mm. made it an hour, or actually like forty eight minutes. It. And they took out some shit that yeah. didn't happen. Like from the first original one, yeah. um, they made predictions that perhaps um, you know Ted Kennedy would like run for president, which he did in 1980. He ran for the primary, but he lost. Right. Um, in in the show, they were saying, "Oh, he'll run for president in 1984." That obviously didn't happen. So they took that shit out. Um, they took out some other things about um, you know various things, and they and they made like they played up the whole three antichrist thing yeah. to make the third antichrist look like saddam hussein because it was 1991 yeah. that was the gulf war so they wanted it to look like <sighs> this is like the big evil that we have to defeat now yeah so they kind of went in that direction um so they took out a bunch of shit there's if you look at the wikipedia page for the man who saw tomorrow because it has its own wikipedia page it'll show you like all the differences between the original uh broadcast yeah. and the later edit that they made yeah um and it's kind of instructive to like look at all the cuts that they made because of all the shit that wasn't successful from the first one right but it's just it's funny to me that orson wells i mean he even went on merv griffin the elevator killer. Uh, he went on Merv Griffin. If you watched the our elevator, Man With Two Brains review, yeah, you'll know what we're talking show. about. Um, he went on Merv Griffin's show and just said, you know, I, you know, he he basically thought the whole thing was bullshit. And he's like, yeah. you might as well just get predictions out of like from reading random shit in the phone but book. He didn't know 9/11 was going to happen. See. But okay, well, the thing about 9/11, I'm be the devil's though, advocate on this one, yeah. Yeah, but the thing about 9/11 is that most of the verses that quote unquote predicted 9/11, yeah. Were hoaxes they weren't even from they weren't they even weren't from, even nostradamus they weren't even nostradamus okay they were actually written before 9 11 but they were written by a canadian student called okay. neil marshall All right. and he had written a paper about nostradamus and his whole point was that i can write a verse in this paper that is vague enough that can refer to right. future events All and right. he wrote these particular verses and people totally fell for it. Now, you see, there's one way you could say it's vague, okay? I saw the man who saw tomorrow, the tiger in the blue turban, the great king of terror. Right. Okay. Which at the time, um, when the man who saw bringing tomorrow, bringing fire down in the new city. They were talking about Iran. They thought yeah, they were Yeah, yeah. Bringing fire down in the new happen. city. When 9 11 happened, it was got, kind of clicked in my head. Boy, you know, that, that program wasn't far from being wrong. They got it off a couple, by a couple of years, but. The imagery and the idea was close. But you have to look at history. People would often exploit prophecy. Yeah. Okay. You had a situation where Hernan Cortez, when he showed up to Mexico in, in the Mesoamerican period, you know, 
back, you know, the conquistadors, he knew about the uh, prophecies of Kugel Khan and, you know, and he was making sure to fulfill those prophecies. Yeah. All right. Uh, Nazis kind of did the same thing, evidently. They did, yeah. I wanted All right. to mention that, They actually. would read uh, Nostradamus, and then they would say, we are fulfilling these prophecies. Yeah, looks, look, we're okay. going to win. All right. <laughs> now, you could also it. say that probably Islamo-fascists and Islamic terrorists probably knew about all these prophecies in Nostradamus, and maybe they even knew about that movie and said, yeah, we're going to blow down the World Trade Center because uh, there were a couple of other uh, Islamic terrorists that tried to take down the World Trade Centers with a yeah. bomb that was underneath in the parking lot. And that was 93, so, yeah. 93. So, yeah, who knows if prophecy is being fulfilled or yeah, it if, might be self people, or if people are being inspired to fulfill that prophecy. Here's the thing, though. The one that's kind of pointed to as... In The Man Who Saw Tomorrow, they were talking about, oh, this is, they're talking about the end of the world, the third Antichrist with the blue turban, blah, yeah. blah, blah, who at that time they were referring to as Iran, which, like I said, that's not how that went down. Yeah. Um, but. But they could say it's Mabus, and Mabus might have been an anagram for Saddam. Right, but okay, Mabus has been used to right. refer to Osama, to right. refer to Obama, Obama, to refer to like lots of different yeah, things. Yeah. Like I said, anything this vague is useless because it can refer to anything, anything you, want you want it, it to refer to, refer to, to right. which is why psychics keep shit vague because of this very reason. That's, yeah, it gives you some, some, some wiggle the, room. The problem about this... And he did actually write this quatrain. Like I said, he didn't usually put dates on things. Even um, that, his no. much lauded uh, quote unquote prediction of the Great Fire of London, which happened in 1666, um, even that prediction, he didn't say 1666. He said like 20 score and say, like 66, he said. There was yeah. no like, you right. know, t first two numbers. So it could okay. have been. 1766 could have been 1866 you know he was just, just got lucky right. that it kind of happened and he was wrong about the cause of it because he implied that the cause of it was lightning which it wasn't it actually started in a bakery like in an oven and then spread and it was three yeah and long, the king whatever. of terror thing if i remember correctly doesn't really say 1999 he it says, does it says the year 1999 and seven, seven months and seven which months. is okay. july Okay. 1999. But the thing is, is, did they use the same calendar they in did. the 1500s? They yes, did? people have checked that. They okay. used the Julian calendar, same okay. as that, and all his almanacs uh, went by the same calendar that we use today. So whatever he was talking about was July, July 1999. 1999. And the problem with this is that even Nostradamus, you know, believers right. really struggled to come up with something that happened, happened in, July in July 1999. 1999. The best they could come up with, and this is pretty sad, mm -hmm. was that, you know what happened in July 1999? Mm -hmm. John F. Kennedy Jr. and his wife and her sister were killed in a plane crash. That's about it. Yeah. That's all they could come up with that happened in July 1999. Right. Great came terror from the sky. Maybe it was a plane crash. I'm like, that's pretty sad. That's a reach. Yeah. But that's about as good as I get. Because nothing a, a of Notre import Dame's happened. defender would say, no, he's talking about 9-11, but it's off a couple of years because of something or other. That's how they're going to... That's I'll other. I'll get into the two th to yeah. the September eleventh yeah. uh, right. you know predictions later on because okay. like I said a lot of that was hoaxes it wasn't even shit okay. that Nostradamus wrote oh. or it was shit that Nostradamus wrote that was mixed in with other stuff right or some of the quatrains were mixed with other quatrains from I, other centuries I tell you what on YouTube there's a channel that does quatrains with an actor doing Nostradamus's voice evidently you can get the whole thing on DVD but you could also just watch it for free on YouTube. And he reads those quatrains, and the way he delivers them, they sound like that's just going to happen. <laughs> yeah, so, well, I think that was a problem. And like I said, sound, yeah. that if was you, a problem. You like, say it the right way, you can get it to be like, oh, When shit. I saw The Man Who Saw Tomorrow when yeah. I was a kid, I mean, like I said, A lot of it had to do with Orson nine. Welles. Yeah, it's like the way he, and he's like chewing on his cigar, like yeah. when he's talking, and then he's like, oh, yeah. well, I guess I'll take my cigar out to and then like finish the sentence. that he's doing. Yeah. Right, and it sounded yeah. like all oh, like yeah. portentous and stuff like that. Yeah. But when you read about it later on, one, a lot of that shit never happened that they said that was going to happen. Yeah. Um, a lot of it is like super vague and could refer to anything. And Orson Welles himself, as well as the producer, did not believe it. They right. just did it because. 
money. That was the thing to do. Yeah, they just wanted a paycheck. It was good in entertainment. Either I mean, I yeah. wasn't entertained by the movie. I, I was loved too. The movie. I, I'd like to I see it too. again. I haven't seen it forever. It's on Daily Motion. I watched it today. Okay. It's on Vimeo too. Yeah, it's actually it's awesome. if you want to see it. I haven't seen the Charlton Heston one since I but was younger, but he's knocking it out of the park. Yeah, I mean the pauses are shit right in the right, and, and yeah. the way they talk about the cases, the cases in that movie, it, it, um, they're laid out. S- from small to large, you know what I'm talking about? It gets, yeah. they ratchet it up with each case yeah. to try to get you to believe it. Yeah. You know what I mean? The edit was uh, awesome. I yeah. loved it. It's a good movie. Is it bullshit? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Well, like I said, they all thought yeah. it was bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> They're just it like, we're just, we're just doing whatever. We're good, just though. making some cool, entertainment, though. whatever. Yeah. Like I said, it's, you know, yeah. they just, even back then, I see people think like people sh- the shit was true back then. It wasn't. They were just doing shit for money. They were doing shit to entertain people, just like Discovery Channel. It had a lot to do with nowadays. late great Planet Earth. They were trying to make a second version of that. Right, and that was a huge thing, like yeah. in the seventies, like all that yeah. New Age kind of yeah. stuff, like prophecies and all that kind of yeah. stuff. They loved that kind of shit back then. Um, let's talk a little bit about. I'm going to get into the nine uh, eleven stuff a little bit later on, and I want to get into like the, you know, blowing up of the shuttle challenger and all that kind of stuff because a lot of that was hoaxes let's talk about one of his most famous predictions that he supposedly foresaw the coming of hitler so like i said one of his most famous things was that he supposedly like foresaw the coming of hitler okay um and i've seen like i said wildly varying translations of this particular quatrain yeah um, one of the ones that I have before me, which is actually from, uh, a woman who wrote a book about him, you know, in the seventies, the translation says beasts wild with hunger will cross the rivers. The greater part of the battle will be against Hister, although yeah. she says Hitler, but that's not what he said. He said Hister. He will cause great men to be dragged in a cage of iron when the son of Germany obeys no law. I've seen various, like I said, translations of this all yeah. the Yeah, now this is an English translation from archaic French, probably mixed with some other shit. With because, some other shit. Yeah, so... So, the biggest problem with this, one, a lot of that is, like, super vague. Yeah, and nobody was dragged in any cages or anything. And World the War problem II. with Hister is a that... River called that he wasn't referring to a person right that was a section of the lower danube yeah. and he had actually referred to it in other quatrains like in earlier centuries that he had published i thought it was a river down um there. it, it was like it was a river? yeah a section okay. of the lower danube like i okay, said that's yeah. a river um so he was actually talking about a region not a person so there's that whole thing, uh, you know, about that. There were a couple of other quatrains, you know, there's one in this book here that was like, uh, that says, near the Rhine from the Austrian mountains will come a great man of the people come too late, a man who will defend Poland and Hungary and Did- whose fate will never be certain. But the thing about it, like I said, a lot of these translations are <coughs> one incorrect right. and are based on later extrapolation and hitler didn't come from germany he came from austria yeah but where was what were the borders of germany and in, in, in nostradamus's time did that also include oh i'm austria? not sure actually so maybe that could work but that's very vague that's what i mean that's very and that's vague. kind of the problem and like i said this is a problem i have with a lot of uh prophecy type stuff and we talked about this a little bit on our edgar casey i mean show. a man from germany defends hungary and poland yeah. That could that would probably happen many, many times over in history at well, that time. And like I said, I think that when Nostradamus was writing, he was actually poetically writing about something that had already happened that he thought was going to happen again in the okay. future. So I think that he wrote it in such a manner that it could be interpreted as happening again later on. Yeah. Like I said, after the fact you can kind of squeeze it into anything you want to squeeze yeah, it into. Yeah, and then there's the interpretation. Was Hitler defending Poland, you know what I mean, and Hungary? Right. Or did he invade and subjugate Poland and Hungary? It depends on your point of view. Yeah, most you, would if, argue the latter. Well, there were also pro-Hitler people in the, both of those two countries. Just, well, you know I mean? obviously. So, but but you know. it's just difficult to say. I'm just sure that there were many times in history where there were warlords from Germany that had defended Poland and Hungary in some way. Yeah. You know. 
It's just too vague. That's what I mean. And it's that is kind of the problem that I have. And uh, as I was rewatching The Man Who Saw Tomorrow earlier today, um, I was kind of realizing like stuff that seemed really significant to me as a kid and particularly in this book too like i said yeah. strange stories amazing facts which has like a lot of his quote-unquote quatrains and um you know kind of relating them to events in history like you know edward the eighth and how he abdicated the throne so he could marry uh wallace simpson and things like that um most of the quatrains are so they just they could refer to any number of things yeah. And that's not even taking into account how maybe they were mistranslated. Maybe there was a right. misprint. Maybe there's, there's more than one language Because involved. there's more than one. And, yeah. and honestly, I've seen like uh, scholars of ancient French, scholars of Nostradamus have said they have never seen an edition of his works that is the same. So, okay. yeah, saying so. And like I said, even something as small as an apostrophe or just a letter change or something like that could change the entire meaning. So even in that in antiquity, Nostradamus books, depending on what language they were in, are different. They're different. Even in saying. the same language. Even in the same different. language, they're different. Okay. Because like I Boy, said, that really throws at the up. time, you know, they, like I said, typesetting was hand. You had to yeah. hand put all the letters into the press. Right. And it's like if something. If someone in another city right. was doing it and like left out an apostrophe or left out a letter or something like yeah. that, it would change the entire meaning of it. And I, like I said, Nostradamus scholars have said they've never seen an edition of his works and they don't really have any super original ones. There were some that came out like maybe like when he was older, like right after he died. That's like the earliest ones. But most of the later ones, he's like, they're all different. He's like, I've that never leads, seen any that are the same. That leads me to believe that there were regional preferences. Exactly. In other words, exactly. guys over in another part of town says, I think I right. what this prof prophecy is about. And like you said, when you were talking about the Nazis, yeah. I mean, they knew about Nostradamus. They yeah. knew about that prophecy. Yeah, and they manipulated it. And they manipulated it, it right. to look like... Like they were know, going to conquer. Like they were going to win, yeah. and that they printed it on flyers now, and dropped it like yeah. from planes. So yeah. but, you can like manipulate things yeah. to kind of say whatever you want it to say. Yeah, they... what uh, I'm arguing. Yeah, the, uh, the Nazis were... Telling people that Nostradamus had predicted, had predicted that, that they their would victories, win. yeah, because they were trying to demoralize right, the yeah. enemy. It's like, look, it's a foregone conclusion; right. we're going to win, so you might as well just give up. Mm -hmm. That's what they were hoping would happen. And yeah, like and, I said, I even even when the even when the shit didn't seem to say that they won, right. which it didn't really, they kind of like massaged it to kind of sound like that. And it's it's my recollection that the the quatrains that the Nazis were using had nothing to do with the quatrains that we use to talk about the Nazis. It had something to do with some battle that was going to happen. Yeah, you know. Well, like it's I said, a... most of his shit was so vague, and he right. he would kind of hit the same themes over and over right. again, like battles. He would um. A lot of the underlying themes of his quatrains were, oh, Muslims are invading Europe, but that was because That's of been the going on Ottoman, forever. Right, but that was because of the, like the Ottoman right, invasion yeah. and stuff, which was going on in his time. Right. So he was just kind of like projecting that into the future. Yeah. So, you know, whenever it seems like he was super prescient about, you know, this, that, or the other happening, it's just he was taking things from the past, writing about it in a vague type of way that could have referred to a lot of right. things. You know, King's... Yeah. Earthquakes, floods, you know. Diseases and Diseases plagues. and, you know, shit like that. Battles. It's like that yeah. happens all the time. Another thing that another thing is is that there are so many quatrains out there that are so obscure and so vague, they're never discussed. And you read them and you're like, what is that? Yeah. We're only talking about the quatrains that actually kind of line up with things that we know from pop culture. Yeah, because there were most of like them are not almost that. a thousand of these. Yes, yeah. most of them are not that. Most of them are things that no one talks about. And even the best ones that yeah. they pick out is like, oh, doesn't this sound like this and that? Yeah. To me, they just sound very... Vague, yeah, almost. Like a right. reach. You know what right. I mean? And like I was saying before the break, some of them are outright hoaxes. For example, the ones that were referring to September 11th. Now, shortly after September 11th occurred... Some supposedly Nostradamus penned quatrains made their way around the internet. Now, these supposedly said, in the year of the new century and nine months, 
from the sky will come a great king of terror. That sounds familiar, doesn't it? Yeah. The sky will burn at 45 degrees. Fire approaches the great new city. In the city of York, there will be a great collapse. No, Two that was not in the original. Right. Torn apart by chaos. While the fortress falls, the great leader will succumb. Third big war will begin with the big cities burning. Now, the problem with this is that in the year of the new century in nine months, that is a fabrication. Yeah, um, that wasn't in there. That came from the original quatrain about 1999 in the seven right. months, the great king they of terror. They changed it. That, and that was changed to yeah. more suit uh, 9-11. Right. The sky will burn at 45 degrees. It um, didn't say this. That so is a later, uh, a later fabrication. Right. Or it was taken from another quatrain and like right. squashed into this one. Um, because people were like, oh, 45 degrees, New York City is at 40 degrees and 47 minutes, like latitude or longitude or whatever it is. Um, which, you know, eh, whatever. Now, the problem is that whenever Nostradamus, and he did refer to New City sometimes, and I feel like a lot of people think that he's talking about New York. He's not talking about New York. He's talking about Naples. Naples, uh, the Greek name of Naples actually means New City. Uh, so whenever he talks about New City and like fire and blah, 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 he's talking about Vesuvius. Uh, which actually is near Naples and sometimes erupted and like fucked shit up. So that's usually what he's talking about. Well, you know, you a, a Nostradamus fan is going to say, "Oh no, that's not what he's talking about." It has a double meaning. You know, what I'm <laughs> of about? course, you can say that. Well, like I said, and I don't remember. I I don't remember. He's making an analogy, right? You know, I don't remember who it was that said this. It was, I right. I want to say it was Carl Sagan, but I think maybe not. But um, believers in this type of thing are like what he called unsinkable rubber ducks. It's yeah. like no matter what you come up with, it's like they'll just come back up and just be yeah. like, no, but blah, blah, blah. Because they want to believe it so bad, so they'll always like come up with something else. Beijing wants, me, wants to go out. So. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, so as I mentioned earlier, um, a lot of those two quatrains were invented. And they were invented on purpose. Uh, by a Canadian student who had actually written a paper about Nostradamus and wanted to make the point that if you wrote something that sounded prophetic and sounded like something that Nostradamus could have written, that people would pick it up and run with it and they would apply it to, you know, later. So it's kind of happened. like an experiment. So yeah, he okay. did write it prior to 9-11, but okay. he deliberately wrote it to be vague enough that it could refer to pretty much anything. Okay. Um, well, this, and, this yeah. gets to what I wanted to say. Yeah. I believe that Nostradamus was doing this on purpose as part of a method. Yeah. But I also believed he thought that that was predicting the future. I don't think he thought he that did, was yeah. fake. He did. Yeah. Like I said, I, I think that was part of his, um, science. That was part of his quote unquote, quote unquote science. Right. Yeah. That you yeah. can predict the future by he being thought. vague. Astrology and like I said, history right, yeah. history is cyclical. Therefore, it follows right. that if I look at a time in history where Mars and Venus right. and Jupiter were in a particular alignment, if I look into the future and this particular alignment happened again, then this shit will happen again. So I'm gonna yeah. predict it. But so what that means intelligently, is... he didn't put dates on stuff. Right. So what that means, <laughs> well, he knew he couldn't do it that well. Right. <laughs> what that means is is that he was not a charlatan or a fake. It, what it means is is that he was a man applying a um, a pseudoscience is what he was trying to apply a pseudoscience right. to reality. Yeah. Thinking that it's real. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I think was going on. The problem with a lot of this kind of stuff, and it's sad because it's still even in this day and age when we have all of this amazing. Uh, technology and knowledge at our fingertips. Um, it does seem like a lot of people still believe in this shit because, I mean, just a random uh, search of YouTube is like Nostradamus predictions for 2019 came up with all kind of crazy shit. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I think the thing is... I have to admit, I, I used to do that kind of stuff. Well, here's the thing. And like, I'm not a psychologist, yeah. um, but I'm going to say, I think it's because... Human beings are very um, uncomfortable with uncertainty. Yeah. They don't like knowing what's not what's going to happen in the future. They they want to have a handle on things. Yeah. It's like, you know, I can control things. I can control the environment. I can control this and that. But because they know deep down that they can't, um, then they're looking for some way that will give them kind of 
an edge or a knowledge of yeah. like I know what's going to happen in the future. Nostradamus said this and that. Yeah, so yeah. That, so therefore, that's what's going to happen. That's kind of the way I used to approach it. Like, what did yeah. Nostradamus have to say about this? Right. Can I get a heads up? Can I? Yeah, can I right. see maybe what'll happen? And I think but, that's a very common. Yeah. I I just think that's the it's way a, the human brain works. It's the same thing as a horoscope. If you're yeah. reading your horoscope, it's the exact same right thing. You know, they're vague. You can read into them, and you know, you'll feel better. Like, yeah, I know what's going on. Yeah. That's all it is. I think it's all it is because, and it's like about I said, probability. Yeah. And, and like uh, I said, it's it's because, you know, I, I don't have this because I'm perfectly fine with not knowing what's going to happen. That's, that's fine yeah. with me. But it's like, I know that that's not a common thing. It's a very human thing to want to have control over your environment, control over, or feel, at least feel like you have control over what's going to happen. And if you know that you don't have control over what's going to happen, then you have to have all these kind of like methods of figuring. It's the same, you know, it's the same thing as like, you know, what we call quote unquote primitive tribes when they go out fishing or they go out like doing something that's going to like feed their families. They have all these rituals. It's like, yeah. well, you know, I have to have this on my boat or I have to have this particular right. lucky thing because you know that'll fix everything or I have to pray to this particular yeah. god or whatever yeah. to make you feel better and in some ways it does work because it makes you more confident right so it almost seems like a self-fulfilling prophecy because it does make things work a little bit better because you're more yeah. confident or whatever but I mean it's an illusion right but it's a helpful illusion yeah it's like you read a you, you see something happening and you, you, you say well what did nostradamus say about that right and you find some quatrain that's kind of related and you go well it's gonna be okay yeah and you kind of fit in okay even though i yeah. should say that like yeah here's the thing <laughs> when i watched the man who saw tomorrow i was like i've forgotten how apocalyptic oh yeah it's apocalyptic yeah because this shit's over with yeah. yeah, 1999, the world's going to end, yeah, you guys, because yeah. this came out in 1981. So it was yeah. like, there was many years away. Yeah. It's like, you know, now, 1999, it was like a long time ago, and yeah. obviously nothing bad happened. Oh, the millennium was like, man, the world might end. Yeah. You even had, you even had, I Arnold, remember, you I even remember. had Arnold Schwarzenegger saying this. Like, I remember. It was end of days. Can I just that. say, for the record, though, yeah. I never... Devil I, might show up. I never thought and that. Then you had, and then you had, then you had, what was it, the big computer uh, problem? Uh, Y2K. Yeah, like Y2K. Y2K. I didn't yeah. think anything was going to yeah, happen with that. Really. See, I'm, and I'm not saying that to be prophecies. a hipster. I I really did not think anything, anything bad was going to happen. Because I, every the, single time some stupid motherfucker comes out and is like, the world's going to end. All this bad shit's going to happen. I'm like, no, it's and, not. Just and, stop. Yeah, Just stop. And then, and then it was not. the Mayan calendar thing with 2012 right. or something. And Nostradamus got like fucking roped into that yeah. too, even though yeah. he made no predictions about 2012. Okay. He but you know what? I, he said the world was going to end in 3797. Okay. Well, here's the thing. 1999 was just supposed to be the Great War. A lot of that apocalyptic. A lot of that apocalyptic stuff, though. I kind of took comfort in it. Yeah, this shit's going to all be over Did soon. You? Oh, it's all going to be over soon. That's we had to worry about it. <laughs> I took comfort in the fact but that I only I'm half, like, I only half believed it though. I only half believed. I only it. took. I didn't take yeah. comfort in it. I just yeah. thought you're full of shit, like every other person <laughs> that said that, like it's in just, the history of ever. To me, it was just kind of like a fun thing to believe in. Or at least the anxiety was kind of, it's kind of fun to have a little bit of anxiety. Oh, something I have. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, for the, the record. The future won't be boring. For something the record, have. it's like every time and, and instantly, like the second, like somebody comes out like on YouTube or like on the news or whatever. And yeah. It's like, oh, this horrible bad thing is going to happen on this date or whatever. I'm just like, yawn. Nothing's yeah. going to happen. It's fine. It's like, yeah, bad shit can happen, but it's like apocalyptic world ending shit. That shit's shit. been happening for t tens of Man. thousands of years. I, that's what I mean. It's like, it seems like somebody that doesn't know anything about history. Yeah. Or doesn't have like a long-term view of it. Like, it's, it's funny. I was just reminded of like this one time. I was at my grandmother's house or something like that. And these two fucking Jehovah's Witnesses came to my door. It's like two little old ladies, right? And I don't like to be... Well, okay, this isn't entirely true. I was going to say I don't like to be an asshole. Sometimes I do. Yeah. But these two little old ladies, and I felt bad for them, so they came to the door, and they're Jehovah's Witnesses or Mormons or whatever the fuck they were. And they're trying to tell me how, like, oh, well, don't you think the world is going to end? Like, look at this, that, and the other thing. Like, they were whatever that was in the news at that particular time. And I said to them, I'm like, <sighs> yeah, but that's been happening since forever yeah the world is always ending like do you <laughs> not realize that or anything and then they got like super mad at me and i was just like well i don't i don't get why they don't understand that 
Well, it's the end of the world as you know it. Here's the weird thing, is that the world as you know it is always ending. That's what I mean. Because the future is always coming. That's what I mean. And the things that you know now will not be applicable too much in in the future. Like I said. So everything is apocalyptic. You're always going to have, you can always have that apocalyptic feeling. You can have that. But it's like, see, I don't have that. Like I said, I'm not, as much as I love, you know, and. Think about how much the world has changed since the 1990s. Right. But. You know what I mean? I didn't find it particularly upsetting. No, it's not upsetting, upsetting. but you know, we never, the world as we knew it is gone. Yeah. So in a way, this is the apocalypse. But that's what happens. But that's how it goes. That's how it rolls. And that's how it rolls with every generation. And I don't understand why that's so upsetting for people. It's not upsetting. It's not upsetting. Is it's it just upsetting? Some I'm people, not upset. some people have kind of an anxiety about that the world that they like that's happening now right. will end. It will. Yeah. Because the world is always changing. But that is an inevitability. It doesn't mean that the world of the future you won't enjoy it. That doesn't mean that. It just means well, that see, the world that's that you know the way now I is not going to be here. Right. Because here's the thing, like you know, like you, I grew up in the '70s and '80s. There was yeah. some rad shit about that right. time. I still like a lot of like yeah. movies and music and shit from that time, but. One, I can still listen to that, so it's right. fine. Um, two, it's like a lot of shit nowadays is a lot better than it was yeah. back then. And I, I've said this many times on our shows. A lot I better. N- I never, ever would have been able to foresee the impact of the internet. Nobody did. Yeah. Nobody did. God damn. If anybody said they did, it's they like were It's like something lying. out of my wildest dreams. But it's cool, though. Because yeah, yeah. It, well, I think it's because... Like my, per- I have a particular personality type where, like, I'm a very laid back. I-, I know this is hard to say because I'm like super stressed out all the time, but I'm in general I'm a very laid back kind of person about like shit that happens. I'm just kind of like, shit happens, and I'm like, okay, well, now we need to readjust to deal with that shit that happened. I'm not gonna get upset. I'm not a nostalgic person. Um, I'm not kind of a person that's like, oh, we should go back to the old way of doing this. Like, no, I don't want to do that shit. I would not go back to the 70s. I would not go back to the 80s. I would not. I'm, I lived through it. I wouldn't. I'm nostalgic, but I'm I don't want to go back to those days. It's I like to look back at those days and see the progress that we've made. You know what I mean? All right, that's and, cool. And I like to like imagine. I like to imagine myself back in the '80s, looking forward to now. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. About how futuristic it really is. I do kind of find that an interesting thought experiment. Yeah. Here's the thing: like, okay, Charles Darwin is like a big hero of mine, and I always like sometimes when I've read some of his writings, I'm like, I wonder, if, like, if I could invent a time machine and go back and get Charles Darwin and bring him to this day and age, like, what would he say? Like, his, I'd be really interested. His mind to would see, be blown. Yeah, like, I'd be interested to see, like, what his reactions would be, like, what he would react to. Um, But other than that, I'm a very roll-with-it kind of person. It's just, like, whatever happens, I'm just going to roll with that shit. I saw some science fiction from the 1920s, some movies, that kind of predicted the cross between television and, um, uh, what was Skype? Where you could yeah. look into a screen and talk well, the to someone, Jetsons kind of and predicted then they that. could they could talk to the world while something right. was happening. Uh, but in that same movie, and I forgot the name. It was an old black and white movie from the twenties. It didn't really fully was it the shape address, of things to come. I think so. Yeah, yeah. it didn't H. fully. Wells. Yeah, it didn't fully address what the impact on society would be if you had internet technology. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was still nineteen twenties. Right. Yeah, it didn't well, change see, and society. that's why I never get all head up about, yeah. you know, people getting outraged about this that, and the other. Oh, it's going to be the end of the world, blah, blah blah. Because there's too many. One, there's too many contingencies. You can never, like I said, no one predicted the internet. No one predicted, um, you know, some people predicted something kind of like it, but nobody predicted the impact that it would have, like the changes it would. There's too many contingencies along the way that you can't predict. So it's pointless to try to predict things, I think. There's another thing is that we talk about like the fall of societies and like a post-apocalyptic and an end of the world. If there were an apocalyptic situation to happen now that were, say the United States were to fall and collapse and go into chaos, yeah, a lot of people would die. But it wouldn't be like what you're seeing on Mad Max. That wouldn't happen. No, I don't believe that. No. Could because you can't erase that knowledge and you couldn't erase all that technology. Exactly. You would still have high technology. Yeah. You'd have a post apocalyptic society that had a lot of education, a lot of knowledge, 
you may not have the internet, but you'd have all these books. And then quickly the internet would just come back. Right. Because there'd be computers around. Yeah. And you'd have solar technology and a smaller population, a smaller and smarter population, because you'd have gone through like an edge. A, a bottleneck. You'd gone through a, a bottleneck. Right. Uh, so uh, an apocalypse would not be moving, would not be mankind moving backwards. An apocalypse nowadays probably would mean mankind taking a leap forward. You know, yeah, you that, have a smaller population right. with less load on it, with strong, intelligent people with access to in technology, picking it up, and then like two generations later, you'd be back in a high tech world with a very small. That's population. kind of what I feel like because Probably I feel like a lot of the shit that is not taken into account is that, yeah. you know, yeah, oh, we get bombed to fuck and everybody goes back to cavemen, but that wouldn't happen because wouldn't happen. People's brains are not caveman brains. Right, yeah. We've, it, we've descended along this particular line. We know things. Rome fell. Uh, you have uh, Middle Ages, Europe, all that shit fell. And, and technology continued to move forward and knowledge continued to move forward. It yeah. never really went backwards. People knew all that. For, the, for the most part. nowadays know all yeah. that stuff. We have the accumulated yeah. knowledge. And there's too many machines laying around and there's too many books laying around now. It, you couldn't erase knowledge like you could back in the past. Yeah, it's it's not the same. No, it's, it's not, not same. comparable. So, yeah. like I said, and like I said... I feel like it's impossible to predict things because there's too many historical contingencies, too many little, too many um, large historical events have hinged on like little tiny, like unpredictable, you know, little yeah. things that happen. So I feel like it's pointless to try to, you know, extrapolate what's going to happen in the future. It's like most people that try to extrapolate in the future just get it drastically, drastically yeah. wrong. So I just feel like it's it's a wasted enterprise. Yeah. I just don't see any value. Okay, in it. back to Nostradamus. Is there anything more? So we're okay, about? we're going to talk a little bit about. There were a couple of uh, hoaxes, like I said, just like the September 11th hoax. Uh, there was also one about the Space Shuttle Columbia exploding. Um, shortly after the Space Shuttle Columbia exploded. Uh, a supposedly uh, Nostradamian uh, quatrain made the rounds that said, In the mission of the first blue star, a child of the holy land among the seven shall perish. As the ship descends, heaven, sky, the lone star be scattered with wreckage. Now, a lot of people pointed, and I saw a lot of Nostradamus sites that said, Oh, it predicted the Columbia disaster, blah, 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 in 1986. Um, this was also a hoax, although they're not quite sure where it came from, but it's not in any of Nostradamus's, uh, original things. And, uh, you know, it didn't sound, didn't sound like a Nostradamus. Yeah. But like me. I said, they're, they're trying to make the point that it's very easy to write something in that vein that sounds like it refers to something, you know? Yeah. Uh, there was also one when <laughs> this one kind of cracked me up when George W. Bush was elected in, uh, 2000. Uh, another quatrain made the rounds that said, Come the millennium, month 12, in the home of greatest power, the village idiot will come forth to be acclaimed the leader, which somebody wrote as a joke, and then like a lot of yeah. people like picked it up. Yeah, that just sounds too contemporary. Right, exactly. There a was quatrain, also... A, a true quatrain didn't sound that precise. There's yeah. more all over the place. <laughs> exactly, that's what yeah. I mean. There was also one about uh, the guy that wrote Gangnam Style, which... <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I don't know why somebody... The Korean guy? Because, yeah, yeah because yeah. some people said, like, when his... Uh, the the implication was that when his video got a billion views on YouTube, mm. the world would end. Right. But it has got no. a billion videos so right. far, and the world is still trucking along as far as we know, unless we're in the Matrix or something. So uh, that was obviously the world's not, not going to end, people. Yeah, it's. Yeah. And we no did one... an end of the world prediction show. Totally, it's. It's fine. There's only one way it's the world fine. could ever end, and that would be some kind of a like uh, a deep impact from some kind of large. That's what body. I mean. Which could happen. That could happen, but it's unlikely at this point. It's unlikely, and yeah. if it did happen, like we probably wouldn't know about it until like a, a few days before. Yeah, you'd and have then a couple days like, warning, and then there'd be nothing. You well, could do about it. there wouldn't be anything you'd do about it. Yeah, so right. I, I just feel like that's, you know, it's it's not productive right. to like worry about that kind of shit. Yeah. But um, yeah, so. As I said, we're kind of talking a little bit about the man who saw tomorrow, and they're kind of like predicting the end of the world in 1999. Now, I did look up, because I had to do it for this show. I was like, so what are the predictions 
for 2019 because you know that all the paranormal sites are all the Nostradamus. Are there predictions pe- for 2019? Of course, there's predictions for every year. Well, Original like Nostradamus I said, ones? yeah. Well, he yep. wrote his centuries. Okay, Went. were up until, like I said, he said the end of the world was going to be 3797. Okay. For the next 2,000 years from when he uh, first started writing them in the 1500s. So he made predictions for like every year up until... Because I thought the centuries were vague in the order that they They are. They are vague. So a century could be any time you want it to be. Pretty much. Okay. And I I feel like that's That's kind of what... That's what I thought. So I said like, okay, so I was like shortly before we recorded the show, I said, I'm going to look up what the predictions for this year are and we'll see how accurate... If it's actually for this year because like I said... (laughs) We'll see how accurate this shit is. Okay, so t- for predictions, for predictions for 2019 uh, from the Nostradamus websites, y'all. Um, again, we're predicting World War Three, which I think they've been predicting, yes, predicting every, every year, year since every 1999. Year. This is a war that's going to last 27 years, which again was the same thing that they predicted when the world was going to end in 1999, which didn't happen. Um, supposedly this big thing is like, oh, the U.S. and the Russia, and they're going to, like, unite and, like, fight against the Antichrist or whatever. Yeah, that's Um, been going on forever. Yeah, so that, like I said, that's the same thing they're predicting every year since 1999. So we'll see. I've been waiting for that one to happen. We'll see if that happens, 2019. Yeah. Um, also there, there's a prediction of a gigantic earthquake, like, like 8.5 on the Richter scale. That will occur between California and Vancouver Island, so look out for that uh, at some point. There's also supposed to be massive flooding uh, in Europe, particularly in Hungary, Italy, the Czech Republic, and Great Britain. So we'll see if that happens this year. Um, Some more positive developments that are supposed to happen this year, according to Nostradamus. This year, we're supposed to be able to start to communicate with animals. What? What? Communicate with I'm just, well, okay. I'm just saying. Okay. Well, okay. Right. The the quatrains say, basically, the pigs will become brothers to man. Okay. Which could be interpreted in a lot the of different ways. Like, we're going to stop eating pork. We're going to start talking to pigs. Like, because I'm going to say, like, talking to animals, like, yeah, I already do that. I already talked to my cat. Or are they talking about certain... And she poli- kind of understands. Are they I talking think. about certain political parties being friends with you now? Or what are they talking well, about? Well, see, that's... Do they see, mean actual that's pigs another... literally? Or do they mean the people you think are pigs? That's what I mean. So it could be... Mean you anything. don't know. You don't know. You don't know. Too vague. So, yeah. So, other people have said, oh, this is the year everyone goes vegetarian because we don't eat pigs anymore. Or, you know, this is the year we start talking to animals like fucking yeah. Dr. Doolittle. I don't fucking know. Um, also, supposedly this year, medicine is supposed to advance to a point where people are going to live to 200 years old. It ain't going to happen. No, I don't think it's going to happen, happen either. No. Um, also, another prediction that was made for this year, uh, and the, the quatrain supposedly says, and this is, like I said, translation, I don't know how accurate this is. After a new engine will appear, the world will be as in the days before Babel. Meaning, some people are saying, oh, it's like the internet. Oh, he's talking about the internet. That's not what they're talking about. That's not what they're talking about. See, this is why I have problems with this kind of shit. And this is why I have problems with all of this psychic kind of shit and all this prophecy kind of shit. Because... That's awful vague. Yeah. And like... A new engine. All of his kind of... Like, new engine. That can mean anything. That can mean anything. That can mean anything. Yeah. That could mean a car engine. That could mean a plane engine. That could mean a fucking... Are they talking about the new electric engine in the Harley Live Wire? <laughs> <laughs> what are they talking about? Because that's coming out. Because, you know, it, if you're so inclined... Yeah. yeah you, oh, he's talking about the internet. Yeah. Oh, he predicted that shit. No, but see, this is the... Okay. In my life, I have been to exactly one psychic. Yeah. Um, I went... I don't know if you guys know, if you're not from Florida, but there's a town here called Casadega... And uh, it's a spiritualist enclave. So you can still go there. It's actually kind of a tourist area now. But you can go there and it's like a lot of spiritualists and psychics and whatnot. Um, So I went there several years ago with my mother and some of her aunts because they were like, oh, let's go to Casadega. It'll be fun. We'll go to the psychic or whatever. Um, So it's this kind of shit. You go to the psychic and they say some vague bullshit that could kind of apply to anybody or anything 
but it kind of sounds like also it could apply to you. Yeah. And then you leave. I mean, not me because I don't believe that kind of shit. But if you're inclined to believe that kind of shit, then you'll leave thinking, man, she got me. <laughs> she knew what I was talking about. Like I said, I go to the psychic. All she said about me was, well, you look like a person of an artistic demeanor, which probably anybody would know if they were just looking at right, me. Right, you have artistic demeanor. Yeah, yeah because, that you know, like I look like a goth chick. It's like, yeah. you know, anybody would call that pretty much if they were paying attention. <sighs> and that was pretty much all she... Uh, she said that, and she said, oh, you have a red-headed angel like or a redheaded spirit like watching over you and at the time before i dyed my hair my hair is naturally red so, so somebody in your family she's just assuming that it was like a relative mm -hmm. so like i said me being a skeptic i immediately twig to like well obviously i look like a goth person right, yeah. and i have red hair so she just picked up on two major things about me and like extrapolated from that and i feel like that's what a lot of like i said i don't think nostradamus was deliberately bullshitting i think he did believe what he was doing but yeah. in later years i think people are taking his shit yeah. and retrofitting it back into events that they want it to be because i've seen the same quatrains applied to different things in history and it could fit just as well he's using a methodology to scry yeah that's what he's doing yeah and they found out that the more explicit you were in a scry, the less chances it would actually happen. Right. And that the more vague you were, the more chances it would seem to be fulfilled. And that's what they're doing. That's what he's doing. And, and there's I feel a like... certain art to it. Now, here's another thing. He realized you can make money with this. So we haven't yeah. really gotten into this yet. You had rich people that would want you to come and basically tell fortunes. Yeah. You know? Which is what he that's generally what made his money right. doing, sure. And, in different uh, courts and whatnot. His name survives today because he was probably good at it. He was quite famous at right. at the time, even even in France. Like his international fame didn't really grow right. until later on after he was dead, after the publication of his stuff. So but. just like a horoscope, you have to be able to look at somebody's signs and then come out with a with a prediction that's vague enough, but then kind of tailored around the person that you're talking about to yeah. make it fulfill itself. That's what he's doing. Have you ever seen... And then seen... after it happens, you go, I was right. Yeah. See, it did happen. And I didn't even expect it to go that way. And yeah. it's it's a mind fuck, really. Yeah. Okay? These guys are not totally analytical. They're not the modern analytical mind of where they're going to sit around and go, oh, well, what I did was is it was just a probability thing. I painted this picture. And yeah. Of course it's going to happen, most likely. That's not how they're looking at it. They're looking at it as, boy, it's a miracle. Yeah. It's a miracle. Well, because like I said, if you're a psychic, uh, you know, and the ones that are still alive now, Sylvia Brown died, didn't she? But I think... Yeah, this, she was a fake, though. Well, duh. Yeah. But uh, they're all fakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I James she Van knew, Prague, I she, is, is, is he still alive? I don't know. Well, here's the thing, is that these modern people doing this, okay, should know better. And I believe most of them do know better. I think the modern ones do they know do better, know yeah. Better. But, I, but Nostradamus came from a time where I don't think they knew better. They didn't. I That's what I mean. That's why I'm not attributing like nefarious, um, yeah. you know, purposes to him because there were it easier, seemed like there this were was a legitimate like yeah. way of seeking knowledge at there the time. There was a much easier way to do what he was doing and still right. make the money. And if he wanted to bullshit, he could have right. done that much right. easier. Right. right. I, I do feel like he had a methodology for doing things and he went around, like I said, you know, oh, I'm going to look into the future of this particular year or whatever. So I'm going to look back at the astrological records right. of like when the planets were in this particular alignment. What happened that year? I'm going to extrapolate forward and say yeah. maybe that will happen. It's conforming in this future to year. science. He has a quotes, system. Quotes, he has a system. a system. Right. Yeah. So it's not like he was just pulling stuff out of no. his ass. Right. He did actually have a system, and he thought right. that it was legitimate. He thought it, it was working. And it made sense with all the other sciences that they knew at the time, which would have been astrology. Right. Basically. But he was smart enough to know that he needed to couch it in vague enough terms that it could be interpreted in lots of different ways. Because like I said, if you're writing prophecies, and if your prophecy can be kind of put into several different events then that's obviously not a very good prophecy because right. it's too vague to be of any that's, use. I don't think that's how they saw it. 
No, they didn't I don't see think it they that did way. Either. They 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 thought that it had to be vague for it to be an actual prophecy. Right. I think they thought that was how that was the method by which it would come. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because we're looking at it from a modern person that well, you're not explicit. Yeah. So it's not an act. They didn't see it that way. Yeah. I don't think they saw it that way. Because I mean, he very very rarely came right. up with like a year. Where, yeah. like I said, people are like very, oh, he said 1999. But like I said, he was, he's like, I'll be dead. What the hell do I care? <laughs> like right. what happens yeah, in 1999? To... <laughs> yeah, I'll be long dead by I'll then. I'll be long dead and no one <laughs> will care. It's <laughs> yeah. like, you know, he, yeah, he came up with 66 for the Great Fire or whatever. But it's like, that could have been any time. Yeah. I was going to say, I know you're probably pretty drunk right now. But would you drunk like to legs make, are, my legs are, fucking... okay. Would but... you like to make any Nostradamus style predictions? about the future it doesn't have to be this year it could be many years from now no one will know make some predictions for after you're dead so that people will look back on this podcast i can't do that I'm not, and be I'm, like I'm nostra not, thomas nostra thomas predicted on the seventh this, moon, that, and the other on the seventh moon let the <laughs> fifth wolf rise on the seventh yeah the seventh moon this is pretty good this rise. sounds like nostra thomas already may he see his own Nostra Thomas demise. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm just making this. That shit was up. pretty good, actually. Yeah, yeah. Well, like I said, as long as you relate it to like someone's death or like a battle, yeah, or you yeah. know, someone taking over another thing, or like yeah. you know, you can't go wrong with that kind of no. shit because that shit's always happening. Right. Humans, as much as they like to think they're complex and stuff, we we follow very predictable patterns. Yeah, and as long as you stick to those predictable patterns, you're probably pretty safe. Like I said, all all your psychics now is even fucking Sylvia Brown before she yeah. croaked. Um, you know how hard can it be to like predict? Oh, there'll be upheaval in the Middle East. Yeah, no shit. Yeah, there'll be earthquakes. Yeah, no shit. Yeah, no shit. There'll be a disease that spread that could like refer to right. anything. So just keep it like that, and you're golden. Right, you're golden. Just. You know, yeah, pro the, tip for and, any psychic. And, and the modern mind grasps why this works very easily. Yeah. But I don't think the medieval I, mind yeah, I don't think so or either. the uh, Renaissance mind really was really uh, hip with the idea of statistical probabilities yeah and the fact i don't that, even think most modern people and, understand yeah, and statistical that, probability honestly poetic language that could have many different interpretations would help you be accurate in your yeah. pre- in your predictions because he never like i said he very rarely he very rarely referred to a now date can, or a year he very rarely referred to people yeah. by name now, now we can take this into like pro- in the modern sense in project stargate with remote viewing they said the less precise you are, the more accurate you will be, but only after the effect when in remote viewing. That is a which, very that is a very which, accurate which assessment of Nostradamus's this, predictions. Right, right. The vaguer you are, the more accurate, accurate you, you are. Be, yeah. But only after the shit. Only after the effect. And I feel like um, I looked up uh, the Nostradamus mm-hmm. entry on Skeptics Dictionary, yeah. and they said pretty much the exact same thing. They said all yeah. his followers like. You know, they're very into, like, the magic aspect. It was, like, his stuff is, like, super vague until after the fact when it becomes crystal clear. Right. <laughs> and then exactly. you go, what a master you Then you, you go, are. wow, he wow. figured that shit out because, you know, the shit already happened. It's but cancer. like I said, nobody predicted anything beforehand. <clears throat> right. And as I said, prophecy is useless if you can't prevent something from happening Prevent you're not seeing something the future. from happening you're not, you're not, seeing, not the, seeing the future you're not seeing the future you're only you're only telling what happened in the past yeah and yeah. i think that's kind of the case here sorry yeah. nostromus i know yeah. you've been dead for several several yeah. centuries but i feel the need to apologize. even though i think anyway. he, i still think he thought he was doing some serious shit i do too i think he did yeah. i do too yeah. like i said it's the same as edgar casey do yeah. do i think that he believed that he had powers and he believed he was what he, he was doing was legitimate? Yeah. Was awesome. yeah i do believe he that he did yeah. believe it was yeah. it correct no no what, uh, but i don't think he was deliberately trying to defraud anyone uh, i really don't yeah i don't think so i really don't so you know that's it's maybe a distinction without a difference, but I'm I'm gonna say that anyway. And I don't I don't think he was deliberately trying to like fuck anyone over. He really did think yeah. he could predict the future because of his little method. It was another time. 
Yeah, it's exactly. Time. Well, let's wrap this up. I All right, so around. we're wrapping up the show on Nostradamus. Mm-hmm. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. Um, I predict that you did enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> i'm just gonna say some shit about some big battle somewhere and blah 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 all right so remember if you like the show like share subscribe on all your social media if you'd like to financially support the show which would be much appreciated you can go to our patreon page patreon.com slash 13 o'clock podcast or if you don't like patreon for whatever reason you can go to our blog which is 13 o'clock podcast.wordpress.com and there's a link in the sidebar to a paypal account where you can give a one-time donation if you'd like to do that also remember check out our last movie review which was deep red aka profondo rosso the giallo directed by dario argento and remember to check out our shows tuesday friday sunday you know check yeah, them all out yeah, yeah. <laughs> and this will do it for episode 129 we will see you next time bye